What is up everybody? It's your boy KSM and on today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to draw character proportions. We're going to go over some of the simple forms, some of the general tips and tricks you can use and also how it relates to the anatomy of the human body. Now, if it's your first time here, welcome in. My name is KSM and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're looking to hang out with my dog who is sleeping over there, make sure to follow on Twitch. And if you're watching this YouTube video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoy today's stream. All right, but there you go. That's a little, little, little YouTube intro out there for those of you guys who are new and have never been here before. Um, so right now today, we've got here a few references, which I'll actually show you guys on the Discord channel really quick because I know some of you probably want to join in for today's stream. Um, so if you guys hop over to my Discord channel, I gave you guys here three references that we're going to be tackling today. Um, we're going to have a front body pose here with this muscular guy. We're going to have a side pose here with this female care, uh, female reference, and then we're going to have a back pose here. And so we're going to kind of briefly talk about these different uh, poses and talk about how you can simplify the proportions and the anatomy just a little bit. So that way you guys can make some cool, easy character designs and have it not feel like they look kind of funky because you guys ever had those drawings before where you drew something and maybe the neck looks too long or the arms look too short or the legs just don't match up you know what i'm talking about if you do put an f in the chat because that is hopefully what we're going to be covering today how to deal with those kind of problems now i gave you guys a cheat sheet from last year that i made which covers some of the seven head proportions but today i want to go over um what we use at powerhouse uh, the studio that i work at and in general kind of this more realistic style that you'll see in stuff like legend of Korra, which is usually going to be the eight head structure so we'll talk a little bit about that and we can even talk a bit about how you can adapt those things as well um, but here are some model sheets that i did for Legend of Korra, talking a little bit about some of the details you'll look at when you're doing a style guide sheet to really break down the proportions and make sure your character is consistent no matter how you're drawing them, because that's another kind of tough thing there to deal with, right? Like, how do you draw this one character from different angles, different poses, and have them actually look the same? even though they're doing different things. So grab these sheets, they're free to grab, but if there's one to definitely grab, it's this one right here for those of you who want to follow along. All right, uh, but there you go. That is the uh, that is the little uh, Discord there. Again, the, the link is going to be in the chat. So if you guys just type in exclamation mark Discord, you'll see it there. Uh, but thank you for the follows, by the way, too. Looter Gohan, uh, Monkey Afro, Al Starkeen, and Carlitas MR. Appreciate the new people coming out here today. And uh, yeah, everyone else who's here, welcome in, guys. Glad to have you on here. Uh, thanks for the tips. Definitely helped for sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nedak TV. Appreciate all the people coming in here. There's no raffle yet, though. <laughs> all right, so cool. So let's go ahead and start off with this first pose here. Now, today, I'll kind of talk a little bit about anatomy, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit lighter on the anatomy today and talk a little bit more about the simplified forms because, again, I want to give you guys some of the uh, some advice here, whether whether you're a beginner or you're a pro, you know, and you're trying to just get a refresher, I want you guys to all feel like you can, you know, be able to utilize some of these uh, tips and tricks here that I'm giving you guys. Yo, thanks for the gifted sub, Nina. Appreciate that. And to NVQ as well. Uh, congrats on getting the, uh, can get in the, uh, the, the gifted sub out there. I know you've been hanging out on my streams for a bit and I greatly appreciate that. It's honestly, to me, it's, it's a great feeling knowing that I have like incredible artists watching my streams uh, and stuff. Cause it's like, I don't, you know, sometimes I wonder like, damn, like this is crazy. Cause you guys make really cool stuff and you're out here watching me. I don't know. Sometimes I get a little nervous. I'm like, yo, these are, these are really good artists. Um, so I appreciate all the, um, all the support and stuff but let me go ahead guys so what i'm doing right now is i'm setting up basically a ground plane um as you guys can see here now i always like to set ground planes um for my designs and the reason why is because i always feel like it's better to have even a simple ground plane like this for your character than to not have anything at all and have your character just randomly floating um it doesn't take that much time to do and it's a really good way to start introducing yourself to drawing your characters in perspective now obviously as you you know get you know a little bit more improvement with your drawings and stuff maybe you don't need to do um you don't need to do this kind of you know 
ground plane and all that stuff. You can just kind of move on and just start drawing it right on the page. But I think for those of you who are still beginners and starting to understand how you can incorporate perspective, 3D forms and all of that stuff with your character designs, this is probably something that's an easy thing you can uh, start knocking out. Um, case am I planning? Uh, am I planning to make a tutorial on drawing expressions? Actually, I have a lot of YouTube videos, surprisingly enough, on character expressions. I think I've released like four to five videos on character expressions. Um, I think I released them last month. So I would say just check out my Discord or not my Discord. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, and on my YouTube channel you'll find a few expression uh, videos on there talking about like dynamic faces, how to draw faces from different angles, and also how to push your expressions from like a level one beginner expression to something that's a little bit more dynamic, maybe something more energetic. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm, I might, I, I should have it. I should have it on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. All right. Yeah, we've been uploading a lot on YouTube. I've been uploading three videos a week on YouTube, um, and I think it's been paying off because we've been growing like crazy, man. We've been growing like insane on YouTube, so I appreciate everybody who's been supporting out there, um, and for those of you watching right now uh, as a YouTube video. But okay, so we've done here some of the groundwork, right? So some of the groundwork here for laying out our character in perspective. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to start kind of uh, drawing in some of the loose forms here, but I'm actually... Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and draw some of the loose, simplified forms here. Now, whenever I'm drawing out a character, um, I'm going to try to show you guys how I simplify these things out in my head. Um, now, this is not normally how I draw whenever I'm actually doing something for work or whatever. Um, usually, when I'm drawing for work, I kind of just do some loose uh, shorthand gestures. But for, for this one, I want to kind of show you guys things that you can do to start knocking out some of the anatomy and simplifying them out, right? Um, do I have a tutorial on character design? I actually have something better than just one tutorial on character design. I have a whole 30 day boot camp course that is on uh, character design. And so each, so it's a 30 days, each day is about two to three hour long videos. And so if you guys want a full course that is equivalent to basically go into an art school or paying for an online course, that is actually free. Um, I do that both here on Twitch and on YouTube. And so if you think about it, 30 days, three hours each video, that's about 90 hours, almost 100 hours of tutorial content that goes super in-depth on character design, all the things that I've learned, all the things that I've taken from books and classes and even work experience um, out here. And I just trying to give it to you guys because I know there's a lot of you out here who want to learn, you know, a lot of you who, who want to get better, but maybe feel like you're like, man, case um, I don't really got the resources to pay for the school and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I do out here on Twitch uh, and YouTube, I guess I should say, is I, I teach and uh, mostly focus on character design because that's, that's kind of what I work on. Um, but yeah, that's what you're looking for. I don't have like, you know, three minute, 10 minute videos like that because I think you guys can find those. You know, there's a lot of those on YouTube already. So you don't, I feel like I don't need to be making those. You can check out the other cool, awesome content creators for the 10 minute quick tips on character design, five minutes, you know, three mistakes you shouldn't avoid. But if you guys want something longer, uh, full courses and stuff, uh, check out my YouTube channel um, out there. But I wanted to show you guys here, take a look at this. So all I did right now for the torso is a simplified box, right? This is again, today's focus is on proportion. So I'm going to be showing you guys simple tips and tricks to look at to observe um, the proportions that we're seeing here. So all I did was I drew out a square, right? And what I'm doing is I'm lining up that square there with the clavicle, also known as the collarbone and the 10th rib of the rib cage. Now, what's really cool is if you actually saw what I did, I just took that same square that we drew, I duplicated it and flipped it down and notice how this right here, check this out. Look, at, I know, I know guys, some of you guys are in the chat are focused on the nippies, all right? But stay focused, chat, stay focused. Look at this. Notice how the proportion there from the clavicle to the 10th rib is this roughly the same distance from the 10th rib down to the pelvis, okay? This is going to be OP because you can see here, if you understand that, then you can start drawing 3D boxes in perspective, and then you can just rotate these boxes, draw them from different angles. You want to do those cool dynamic poses, and this is going to be the simple bare bones for understanding the, the, the general structure there of the torso. It's actually pretty OP. Once I learned about this, I was able to really get a better handle of just knocking out the rough proportions for my characters. And you could imagine, I'll show you guys really quick. If, if I draw for like 
work and stuff, I usually do kind of like rough gestures, right? So I'll kind of go in here, put a rib, put a rib cage on. Uh, I'll put the pelvis in here. Maybe I'll have the legs kind of, you know, swiveling this way and doing a little bit of gesture this way like that, right? But all of these gestural stuff that I'm doing underneath all that, I'm also keeping track of all of the, all the proportional techniques and stuff and measurements that I've already established, right? So you can see here, this is kind of a quick hand, but I, I don't want to rush it today. I want to go over these things uh, at a good pace with you guys so you can understand. So again, first step right here is going to be that, well, that halfway mark. So we're going to basically say that the, I'm going to do it on a new layer here, but basically the rib cage right here, let me do it like in red, maybe. Okay. These are going to be roughly about the same distance apart. So it's nice and easy, um, a good way to kind of get yourself uh, started with some of the proportions. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do proportions for character designs. Just keep that in mind. Um, so, you know, what you're seeing here will probably change depending on the style that you're covering. If you're doing something that's very stylistic and cartoony, like let's say Owl House versus something that's a little bit more realistic, like Castlevania, um, proportions will change for sure. But I always tell people as well that it's um, that I think once you understand the general proportions of the human body, it's only a matter of altering it to whatever your preferences are. Right. And then you'll be able to do some of that in different takes and stuff. Uh, thank you for those of you who joined the discord, by the way. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are finding these helpful. And also, um, if you guys have any questions, by the way, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Uh, this is not just me like giving a lecture out here on Twitch, though I could do that. That's not necessarily my my take. I like I like to chat with you guys and try to help you out with you know whatever questions you guys might be having. So please do feel free to ask any questions out here on Twitch, whether it's about what we're covering here or if we're you know just curious about me and stuff. Because there are going to be points on the stream where I'll just be drawing and good time to to answer any questions. Have I designed any mechas? Not for work, not professionally, but I've, I've dabbled a little bit. I wouldn't say mechas are my specialty, uh, to be honest. But we've done a little bit of that um, just for funsies, but it's definitely on my radar for, for things to like look at and maybe even things to study. Um, but OK, so let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to actually rotate. I'm going to rotate this a little bit to give it some gesture. So I'm going to kind of rotate the shoulder, exaggerate it just a little bit, not too much, because um, I don't because if you do too much with the gesture, it might alter some of the proportions a little bit, you know. OK, so we got here kind of this rough idea for our characters. And um, once we kind of have something like this, I'm going to start showing you guys now how to start getting the overall full body. All right. So watch this. So once you go in here and if you take basically the length of the head, so I'll do it like this. Let's see here. I'll do it on this layer. So if you take here roughly the length of the head, so the top of the head here, all the way down to roughly, I want to say it depends on the, the proportion. So this is kind of where it's going to get a little, um, I would say, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt and, and mix and match it to your preference. Um, but roughly around here, which is going to be the greater trochanter, that's going to be the upper leg femur bone. If you take that to like the top of the head right here, right about here. Okay. And if you duplicate that down, basically the, the length of the head here to that greater trochanter, kind of the side there, the side bony area there of the hip, um, that is actually going to be the rough uh, that's going to be about the same distance down from that section all the way down to the feet. All right. So it's a super cool uh, proportion technique that you can use to easily start structuring out your characters, get the height there and not have to worry too much about whether or not the character's legs are too long or too short or whatever have you. Right. So super easy uh, thing you can do right there. So let me actually size this one up just a little bit. Um, I'm changing the pose just a little bit as well, too, because I think he's looking his head down, which is cool. Um, but I think, yeah, we're going to be changing this. Um, same if it's a child. So that's a great question. So we've, we've covered the proportions for drawing children. Um, so let's go ahead and double check that here. So um, here is one that I broke down the style from Legend of Korra. You guys might have seen the show or heard about this, um, but let's see. So you can kind of see here some of the rules relatively still apply. Um, so in this case here, the greater trochanter of um, children 
it's going to be roughly about like right here. So it's kind of where like that hip kind of transitions into the leg. Um, and you'll actually see this roughly kind of following across all of these different proportions here that they have uh, for these characters. Now, again, it'll vary, right? It'll vary because different characters will have different proportions and you can definitely play around with these proportions. So don't let this be like the only way to draw character proportions, have some flexibility, have fun with it, mix things around. But for those of you who are looking to get a baseline to work off of, um, yes, I would say that this is going to be a good starting place there for um, understanding some of the proportions there. Um, the biggest difference, yes, yeah, so the biggest difference with children is going to be that head size. Kids just have big heads um, relative to everything else. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and label all these things later. So just, you know, don't worry too much about the naming and stuff. Just know that um, we're going to have these like halfway portions and all that stuff there. So now that we've done all that, I'm actually going to go in and uh, let's kind of lay out here some of the torso and stuff here. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. Great question to ask. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that we covered that even briefly out here. Is it bad that I've never seen Avatar? No, it's not bad at all. I mean, there's a lot of shows that I haven't seen that people were like, wow, have you, how have you not seen this? You know, so it's cool. Um, I think Avatar is a great show, though. Highly, <laughs> I personally would recommend it because I, I, I really enjoy Avatar a lot. Um, but yeah, not a problem at all for those of you who've never seen it um, or even heard of it. If you've never heard of Avatar, it's a show that ran, I think, in, I don't know, early 2000s, possibly on Nickelodeon and I think it was a really great show for its time. It had a lot of innovative ideas in animation. It also introduced a lot of cool new uh I think visuals that wasn't really seen that much in the Western uh Western animation style. So yeah it's pretty 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 good show. Great show actually like not knowing baby Sinclair. Okay, I didn't know who baby Sinclair. That was just honestly I did I had no clue who baby Sinclair was. <laughs> that was just I think either past my time or if it was during my time, I think I just genuinely missed it. I just didn't even see it happen. Um Yeah, super solid show. 100% um let's see here i'm gonna go and increase this just a little bit more again i'm 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 tilting his head upwards so just kind of keep that in mind there that we're going to be changing a few things here but not too much i feel like that it'll be like uh kind of confusing you know um but yeah thank you for the uh thank you for the for the sub appreciate that digital uh appreciate that a lot i always get people asking me if i could cosplay from it really oh yeah, it's um it's pretty good. I like it a lot. Um but, you know, each to their own, I would say. All right, but uh yeah, for those of you guys who are coming in again, welcome into the Case and Crew. Um we're going to be covering a lot of uh proportional stuff out here today, so buckle in your sheet belts, but also don't worry too much. It won't be too crazy, I think. Um but yeah, let's go in here now and the next kind of thing that I'm going to be talking about now is going to be the proportion of the legs. Now there's a, there's some cool like tips and tricks that you can do as well for the legs that I'll show you guys uh I'll show you guys right about now. So some of the things that you can do and I think this pose is a little tricky because of the way that his his legs are raised. So I'm actually going to change his pose as, uh, as well. So you'll see me here altering the pose a little bit more um just so that, just to make it simpler to explain, but you could imagine uh, basically the distance here from the the femur there or kind of that side uh, hip bone there or sorry that the side kind of section there of the hip um, is actually going to be roughly the same distance uh, the same distance all the way down here to the knee and then from the knee from the bottom of the knee down to the foot is actually going to be the same distance there um across so it's kind of a, a super cool easy tip and trick you can do and you'll start to see here how we're actually laying out now some of the groundwork um for some simplified proportion right so again if you know how how tall the head is going to be to the pelvis right uh right, this area right here you can duplicate that down and you'll actually have the same proportion now uh from the pelvis um this area right here down to the bottom of the knee and then down to kind of like that base of the foot right so super easy easy kind of thing to follow um you can do that on any kind of design and it'll it should work pretty well um though i always like to preface that it, it can change so i'm going to do that on this side as well here um just kind of simplifying the forms boom 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 
And there you go. We got some cool stuff there. And also, hey, welcome in, everybody who's coming in right now. Thank you again for all the follows earlier, too. Um, we got some follows from... Uh, ah, I can't think of a name. Great name. Uh, Benson Stewart and um, Luther Gohan uh, and everybody else coming in here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go in here. Let's kind of knock out the other leg. So I'm just going to kind of do that. And already, I think we've got kind of a good approach going. Now, again, I know this looks kind of rough and a little solid, but don't worry. Um, we're going to be adding in gesture and stuff in a bit. But I want us to kind of, again, lay out here some of the general uh, proportions first before we talk a little bit about actually applying the gesture. Because I think it's good to understand these foundational things. And then from these foundational things, actually go in and then you can start loosening them up and stuff. Rocking the X shape. I know. This guy, this guy's, this guy's fit. <laughs> How's it going, Rat Lord? Welcome in. All right, so we're going to go in. I'm going to put the back leg here. And again, um, I'm going to be changing the pose just a little bit to accommodate for the uh, accommodate for the proportions here. So I'm going to actually put his feet flat instead of having it raised up. So that way it's easier for you guys to understand. But also, here's a kind of a quick tip here that I want to call out. Um, if, you, if you notice right here, right here actually in... Oh, am I drawing the wrong layer? Or did I merge everything? Oh, I'm crazy. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why did I merge everything? That's okay. It should be fine. Um, what have I done? Let me shift this here. Okay. Um, if you notice right here, actually, in I'm going to do it on a, hopefully on a new layer that I don't merge. Notice how the, I'm doing here the base of the foot. The height right here is going to be right here. Notice at his arch of the foot. And the reason why, guys, um, the reason why is because, remember, we have these characters in perspective. Oh, also, really quick, I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's going to be running right about now. Um, so if you do if you do get an ad, thank you again uh, for sticking around for the ad break. And I hope to see you guys after um, out here, after the ad break. You know, I didn't stream out all this weekend because I had friends visiting. Oh, nice. That's chill. I like that. Nice little relaxation out there. Um, you, you dropped Castlevania after four episodes. You watched it in Japanese dub? Oh, it's interesting. I didn't know they had a Japanese dub. <laughs> Super interesting. Um, that's cool. Um, yeah, if you guys have, again, if you guys have a question, feel free to ask them in the chat. I will try my best to answer the questions um, out here. So don't, don't be shy. You know, you can answer questions and I, uh, I enjoy answering them. All right, but there you go. We've got here the legs now. Nice, simple proportions for the legs. As you guys can see, just from this alone, we've already kind of locked in some good, I would say good general structure for drawing out. Um, a good, some general structure here for the, for the, you know, the head and all that stuff. All right. Um, oh, thank you for the follows too. Beam, Beam Lack. It was my favorite character from Castlevania. Oof. Um, it's gotta be Alucard. I like Alucard a lot. Um, oh, and hey, thank you for the follows too. Danny, damn, so many follows right now. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that, guys. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and see here now, because we're going to talk a bit about, I want to talk a bit about arms, but I want to explain a little bit more with you guys, some easy tips and tricks for also getting the structure of the head. So here's a few, uh, so someone earlier had a question about the nippies and the red nips, and is, if that is something um, that you guys can use as well in your proportions. So here's actually something that you can do. Um, another kind of cool tip and trick here is the roughly for male characters, the distance here of the top of the head right here, all the way here is also roughly going to be the distance of where the nipples are going to land to. Now, obviously this will kind of vary. So, you know, keep that in mind, but it's a good kind of general placement there of where the nipples are going to be. And we can actually use that to also figure out the placement there of the fifth rib and all of that stuff, right? Now, other things to call out here is going to be that if you are drawing a female character, remember that there is volume here in the boobas. And so we'll actually get to drawing some female characters later. Um, but the volume of the boobas will also shift and alter the, the placement of the nippies, all right? The nipples out here. So keep that in mind. Um, keep that in mind that this is not going to be a specific um, landmark that will be consistent. And I always tell people, don't, don't worry about the, the nipples because it's not actually a good, um, a good anchor for the, for the landmarks. Okay. Instead, I'd look at the skeletal anatomy because that'll stay consistent. So I'm talking about the clavicle here, talking about the rib, the, the 10th rib here, talking about the, 
um, the bones there of the greater trochanter, right? So these kind of like specific bony landmarks actually, I think, are much better because they're going to be consistent no matter if you're drawing uh, males, females, all of that stuff. So so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but now what we're going to do is I'm basically going to take here. Um, uh, so if you if you kind of take a look at this character here, um, what's happening is that the proportions of this character are going to be roughly about seven and a half heads. And the reason why is because the human body is roughly about seven and a half heads tall. But now if you wanted to do something like, let's say, more of the kind of semi-realistic style, something like Castlevania, um, they're going to be using something called the eight head structure. Now, the eight head structure, I'll show you guys uh, pretty, pretty briefly right now um, how it works. But basically, the eight head structure is going to say that everything from the greater trochanter, that's going to be, let me see if I can find this, um, from the greater trochanter here is going to be the upper half and then everything below will be the lower half right and so roughly what it's going to say is like maybe like right about here so let me actually change some of this um so right here right here i'm just kind of locking in some general kind of uh, placements here right so you can kind of imagine now notice this see this is where the whole um head height stuff and all of that stuff um is going to come in because earlier you know sometimes the people come in they're like oh how many heads tall should i be making my character this and that but you'll notice how what i did here was I did all the head stuff afterwards, right? I wanted to show you guys the general proportions first. And then from there, you can choose how many heads tall or whatever, because that'll actually alter whether or not you're drawing, let's say, a more um, a more adult character or more of a child character, how many heads tall they are. So now that we're going to go for the eight head structure, I'm actually going to shrink a few of these things out just a little bit here, um, just to kind of get some of the proportions uh, to be a little bit more, I would say, uh, representative of the of this proportion here. So let me go ahead and shift some of these things up. Um, usually, usually when in designing in this uh, designing with these proportions in mind, um, characters tend to have a little bit of a longer leg. So I'm going to kind of raise that up a little bit there. And already you'll kind of see like, okay, cool. We've got here a much taller character, right? It's kind of interesting. Um, but if we did like seven heads, they might look more like a teenager perhaps, or they might even look a little bit more like a child, right? Like someone who's like 13, 14, 15, uh, that kind of age range. But um, well, thank you for all the follows. I hear uh, Godak, uh, the Hillian Herald, great names, uh, Coconut Sin, uh ck kaioken welcome in guys if you guys are new here my name is ksem i'm a filipino art streamer here on twitch and i teach everything from anatomy gesture perspective to all things related to character design and i also work full-time for the uh in the animation industry for the studio that made castlevania so if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're just looking to hang out with my dog who is sleeping over there um do leave a follow join in here and uh, i hope you guys enjoy my streams uh, these streams are going to be pretty educational, and if you guys are interested in like game streams and stuff like that, I do play games, but I have a separate account for that that I actually started doing uh, this year, or not this year, this week. <laughs> so here's my here's my gaming channel. I made a separate gaming channel, my Smurf account, uh, and that's just where I do all that stuff. But I don't really we don't do games on this channel only because um, I like to keep it as an art channel. I like I like. I like how it is out here. <laughs> but yeah, I have a I have a Smurf account. <laughs> a Smurf Twitch account. I know, it's crazy. I love Twitch so much that I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to grind from the beginning and have fun doing it again because, I don't know, I like streaming on Twitch. But I like having some of that separation out here. Thanks. Thanks for getting me to affiliate, yeah. The Witcher animation was really cool. Yeah, so Witcher animation, that was made by Studio Mir. Um, in partnership with Netflix, super cool. Um, I'm a, I really like that one as well. It's a great, um, great series, great series. Uh, the Witcher, the Witcher series, and and Studio Mir does a really great job with doing in-house animations, um, as well as character designs too. I believe they also do the character designs. Um, if not, it's probably Netflix, but I believe I believe uh, Mir Mir did it. I could double check. Them thighs. 
yeah guys got thick thighs um okay but take a look at this we've already locked out here some of the general proportions and so i've already given you guys one the easiest way to draw the torso right how to get the the from the top of the torso all the way to the pelvis um i've also done um we've also gone here and covered how to draw how tall a character can be and then we've also laid out here how how, how you can split the legs to figure out how long the knees should land pretty good not bad right let me know in the chat guys if i'm going a little too fast okay let me know um or if or if you feel like i'm going at a good pace i'd love to know because if you want me to slow down i could definitely slow down or we can you know speed things out uh out here also sana thank you for the follow and also uh pry for ya yeah, thank you um streams lol well I, i'll be streaming a lot of different games i'll be doing a lot of variety stuff so not just lol but i do play a lot of league um is it hard to draw the reverse arc angle line? Is it because of the limitations angle or not practicing enough? Wait, I, I have a question. Why is it hard to draw the reverse arc angle line? I'm not sure I know what that is, Aryan. Uh, the reverse arc angle line. I'm not sure I know. <laughs> um, have I played Witcher 3? Yes, I love Witcher, uh, Witcher 3. Probably on my top five, top five games of all time. Big fan of Witcher um have i done any collaborations with them mm, possibly yeah if i have though i'm i probably i'm not allowed to tell you guys so yeah nda let's just say that there's a maybe i have maybe we haven't who knows uh you mean like drawing the other way if that makes sense oh you mean like drawing uh like the back pose perhaps um the, this rate is a pretty good okay cool that's good to hear um so yeah i think right now we're at kind of like the general i would say we've gone over the beginner stuff we're gonna get into some of the more nitty-gritty and talk a bit more now about some of the arms and kind of the more specific proportions of the anatomy i think that's going to be a little bit more of the pro slash advanced level stuff but don't worry too much about that again i, I don't want to scare you guys off and be like oh man Kasem, you're giving us all this you know all this crazy info out here my head hurts right don't worry don't worry i'm gonna try to keep it nice and simple for you guys um out here right and we're just again laying out here some of the general proportions so let's go ahead and talk a bit now about arms and where to place the arms now roughly the shoulders here should be um should be a little bit kind of placed here where we're going to have the clavicles uh, and the reason why is because remember that the clavicle is actually going to be connecting here to something called the acromion process um for those of you who remember my anatomy tutorials and stuff and then that is going to basically help create some of that shoulder joint area that is in that pocket um now nah, no worries Aryan. um maybe if you could post a picture on the discord channel of what you're referring to maybe that'll help me out a little bit more um it's kind of hard to follow but it's cool got it yeah again i'll try to i'll try to put some notes on and stuff like that um I'll try to put some notes in. Okay, but let's talk a bit about arms. Now, this one is going to be a little bit more subjective, um, but I think this is how I usually visualize drawing arms. Now, what I like to do personally is whenever I'm drawing out my arms, I like to have here roughly here the distance. So imagine this, the distance from uh, basically the past the joint here of the humerus bone uh, to this arm right here. Roughly what I like to do is I like to kind of use that same distance there and that for me is usually usually going to be the roughly the same distance there of the forearm now the distance here of the forearm is going to be about the same distance as the length of the head so i'm kind of just doing these general proportions here i'm leaving a little bit of room there for the elbow so just imagine there's an elbow joint there that connects these two together um, and then you have here the palm of the hand or you have the whole hand actually and the whole hand roughly is about three-fourths the length of uh, roughly three-fourths the length of the head there so we've actually covered if you guys are curious we've covered hand tutorials and all that stuff as well on my streams and so what I always say is roughly the, the hand is about three-fourths the the length of the head the forearm is roughly a little bit like from here to here it's kind of hard to tell because there's a bit of a uh, a depth of field on my camera but roughly the the forearm is going to be kind of close to the head maybe a little bit longer um and so some of these like you can use some of these general proportions to give you a baseline for your character designs right 
Um, but yeah, and that's kind of about it for uh, for the arms as a as a rough kind of uh, general placement there. So let me go ahead and kind of move some things around, and then we'll kind of lay out now. Uh, I want to lay out maybe more of a smoother, not smoother, um, kind of cleaner looking, more kind of relaxed looking gesture because this looks kind of stiff if you if you ask me. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful so far. I do feel like I always want to preface here that that stuff like proportions, these will vary so greatly with style. Um, so take what I'm saying here with kind of like a loose understanding and um, a loose interpretation and also one that's maybe even subjective of, inter of an interpretation. But I, I know for those of you who maybe struggled with doing uh, proportions and stuff, I do hope that this will be helpful to to you guys who are watching out here. Because I know there's probably some of you who've struggled with proportions, right? Put an F in the chat, guys. Put an F in the chat. If you've ever struggled with drawing a character and you were like, man, the arms look too long, the legs look too short, what's going on with the neck here? What's going on with the hips? Why do they, you know what I'm saying? Put an F in the chat if you've ever had that problem before, right? Let's see, show of hands. Because what I'm showing you guys now, I know it's like tedious with all these halves and stuff, but when you actually start drawing things out, the more you start seeing these things in your character designs and stuff, you'll have to, you'll, you'll, you'll be less reliant on doing stuff like this. And you'll be able to do some of the more dynamic poses that I've shown you guys out here on my streams, um, stuff like this, right? Like you can, um, you can start doing crazy dynamic poses where the legs are jutting out in perspective, stuff like this, or you have the knee moving forward. And you can still keep in mind some of these general rules of proportions that we're talking about, but we're not letting it, you know, we're not going to let the, the proportions restrict us. But having a general understanding will actually make it so much easier. And I would say personally, make it less stressful overall. Like if you know, like, oh man, the, 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 the length from the hip here to the, to the knee is going to be the same as as the, the, the lower leg to the feet. Okay. Not a bad, you know, not as bad, not as stressful. So I think personally, I think understanding these things, um, can go a really long way. So, um, and, and, you know, take what I'm using here and, and find the ones that work for you, right? If you prefer a more, um, seven head structure, if you prefer a more eight head structure, five head structure, whatever, whatever works, right. And just have fun with it. Don't get too caught up in all of it and explore, you know? Oh, and Cammy, thank you for the follows in enjoy, uh, Adrian TS. Dang, why are we, getting, <laughs> why are we getting so many follows just now? What the heck is going on? Appreciate that. Um, earlier, somebody asked me how my game streams went. I, it's great. I love my game streams. I love having a fresh new account on Twitch that I don't have to worry about sponsors or worry about whether or not. Um, I've got a lot of viewers and, and, you know, business, whatever. It's just, it's just fun. It's just super fun to have an alternate account where I can stream games, hang out with you guys, troll a little bit, you know, <laughs> because with my main account and I, here's the thing I love, I love my main account. Um, I love my, this account that we have here on Twitch. Um, but this one is purely for art. I, I don't know if there, maybe in the future I'll, I'll combine my accounts together and I'll have, I'll make this also a gaming account and a variety account, but Right now, I like having art, you know, and I like I like teaching art out here, and that's completely okay with me. Oh, am I on the front page right now? Hey, welcome in, everyone who's coming in. Let me know right now, chat, chat. For those of you who followed me, if you if I'm on the front page right now, let me know real quick. I'll do a quick intro for my front pages out here. I never forget. I never forget the peeps on the front page. Um, but yeah, if you guys are here from, if you're seeing this right now and you're watching on the front page, welcome in. My name is KSM. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to drawing characters. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Right now, I'm actually prepping to work as a designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in uh, free art education, maybe you just like animation or you're looking to hang out with my dog who is sleeping over there, uh, come join in, leave a follow. And I also got a YouTube. YouTube channel that you guys can check out as well, where I upload a bunch of full length tutorial videos because one of my main goals of being a content creator is I want to make art education as free and as accessible as possible because I 
didn't have the opportunity to be able to pay for art school when I was younger. And so I want to make sure for those of you out here who want to get better at doing art that you don't got to pay for school because I will give you guys the courses out here for free. I will teach it out here. All the things that I've learned in the industry by myself, taking the classes, all that stuff. They're out here for free. All you got to do is join in, watch my streams and uh, yeah. That's a little bit about me. There you go. That's my little front page uh, spiel, front front page pitch out here for those of you watching um, from front page. I will say though, I I don't give out degrees. Okay, so yeah, you can you can watch my courses and stuff. You're not gonna get a degree, but honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. Okay, I got my job. I don't have a degree in art. I'm I used to be a software engineer. <laughs> I used to be a, I used to be a, 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 my degrees in computer science. I used to be an engineer. I worked as an engineer for five years and I pivoted jobs. I didn't need any degree. So I'm gonna tell you guys right now, if you want to, if you want to work, if you want to work in the animation industry or game industry or whatever, you don't need a degree. You're chilling. You're chilling out here. All right. You're fine. Yeah. See, you guys don't need degrees. All right. Just, you just need some hard work. You got, you want a degree. Okay. Um, if you guys complete my course, I will give you a little badge on Discord. All right? How about that? You want a little badge on the Discord channel? I don't know. <laughs> sure. Sure. I'll give you guys a little KSM crew. Congratulations. You've you've graduated from KSM University. There you go. All right. I'll give you guys that. I'll give you guys a little, yeah, virtual sticker, a little badge. I don't know. Something. Print it and mail it to you? Y'all wild. Uh, that's a lot of work. That's too much work. <laughs> oh, man. Portfolio is most important. Yeah, portfolio is pretty important. If you guys are curious about my portfolio, by the way, it's actually free to check out. Um, here's a link to my portfolio. Um, it's uh, it's pretty outdated, not going to lie. I haven't updated it in about almost a year. So, yeah. But it's still there. It's still there. Um, at Powerhouse, do you work in the studio or mostly work remotely? Oh, I work remotely. Yeah, the the main studio Powerhouse is in uh, it's in Austin, Texas, but I don't want to live in Texas. Um, I like being in California. I grew up in California, so I much prefer it than than being in Texas. Not just okay. Here's the thing: I've actually never been to Texas. So I don't know. Maybe I'll like Texas, but. You know, like I, I, I got family here. I got friends here and I'm completely fine with, 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 uh, staying here. So I live here and I work remotely. Uh, but that's one of the nice things about, uh, I think, you know, animation as well too. Like you don't technically have to be in, um, the studio to do, to do your job though. Some, some studios and some companies will argue that you have to work. You got to work in the office because of productivity and all of that stuff. Like whatever, man whatever <laughs> you don't have to personally that's, that's what i think but i get it there are some there are some studios i really believe that productivity is going to be way way more improved if you um if you have everything done in studio can i get a note card as a cheat sheet yeah you'll get you guys can get one little note card for your final exam if you guys want to get an actual badge to say that you graduated from ksm university just know there are going to be exams I'm going to give you guys, <laughs> y'all, y'all don't think I'm testing you out here. Okay. Quick, quick. Watch this quick test. All right. First question. What is this muscle? Go chat. Hit me. What is this muscle? Let's see. Let's see out here. Bicep. All right. Jokes on you guys. That was the first, that was just an easy, easy example. All right. Someone did get it wrong. It's okay. Gabby. It's okay. It's it's the answer was bicep. All right. It's all right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little harder, a little bit more difficult here. Okay. What is this muscle right here? No, you're good. Gabby. It's okay. Gabby. <laughs> what is this muscle right here? Oh, people been studying, huh? Okay. People been studying out here. Nerds. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Obliques. The answer is obliques. All right. Last but not least, I'm gonna give you guys a tough one. What is that muscle right there? What is that muscle right there? This one right here. Ooh, 
not the lats, not the lats. Some of y'all, hey, some of y'all, see, I tried tricking some of you guys. Now, the answer to this one is actually the serratus muscles. Not bad. Some of you guys got this. Okay. Okay. I stand corrected. I was skeptical. I thought, I thought that some of you guys were going to fail this test, but okay. Some of y'all really want that badge on my discord channel now. Okay, not bad. Yes, that is the serratus muscles right there. They connect over here from the back of the, the scapula, wrap around the rib cage, and all of that stuff. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Okay, let's move on though. <laughs> okay, so again, we've got here these rough proportions. Obviously, you guys can see here, these are very loose guidelines. Um, but I'm going to talk a bit about kind of what's going on here with the arms. So again, what I like to do here is I like to kind of make the distance here of this. I'm going to do it in a slightly different color so it's easier to see. Um, but I like to kind of make this color right here, uh, or not this color, uh, this length right here and this length right here, roughly about the same. Um, this is, again, not including the shoulder and not also including the elbow there. All right. So just keep that in mind, but it's a good general proportion and one that I like to use pretty consistently. And then this one right here is going to be, I'm going to use this in blue as well. This will be roughly the same length. Okay. And then this one right here, um, the length here will be a little bit shorter, right? So about three fourths right here. So this again is the general proportion. I would say, Oh, my bad. Hold on. My bad, my bad, my bad, ha, teasing you guys, teasing you guys. If you want to see, you're like, hey, some I can't see. Make sure to make sure to subscribe to OnlyFans for uh, for the exclusive content behind the chat screen. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't I don't got one. Hey, hey, don't look me up. I'm not on there. All right. Stop. Stop. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, talk about um, actually cleaning this one up a little bit more. All right. And mom the art educators <laughs> advertising i know you're gonna walk in here twitch, dude twitch is like yo why did we put this guy on the front page we thought he was a regular art streamer yo yeah <laughs> I, not again is this another markiplier out here like no 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 guys i swear we're a regular art streamer out here on twitch we don't do anything sus all right we're completely normal i don't know why you guys are following me now all of a sudden we're getting a bunch of follows now the, the moment i mentioned only fans people are like huh Oh, let, me, let, me, let me uh let me click that heart icon real quick guys i don't have one okay just know i, I don't ever plan on making one all right <laughs> okay so um should i label some of these things out maybe not what do you guys think ah mm -hmm. let me think should we label these or should we just draw first let me think man you can see why my anatomy is good <laughs> I, hey what are you what are you talking about <laughs> gabby out here you're on the front page i can see why your anatomy is good i don't have a only fans yo <laughs> some of y'all trolling me so hard um um thank you so much guys i'm missing some of that passive you might be right uh thank you for the sub my name's private appreciate that appreciate the sub out here all right. Um, I'm going to do a quick label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do a quick label out here and then we'll jump into actually drawing out these character, uh, you know, making it look a little bit cooler because right now, um, this mannequin is kind of a snooze. All right. Oh, what the, this can this mannequin's a little, uh, I feel like it's lacking. It's lacking a little bit. So I want to give it some, uh, some labels. We'll slap on some, some, some terms out here and then we'll get this one going. All right. Yeah, we'll be doing the backside. Don't worry, guys. So for those of you who are tuning in right now, I'm going to show you guys. Okay, these are going to be all the references that we're working on today. We've got here a back pose and we're going to be drawing out here a side pose as well. So we're going to be covering the proportions from all different angles. Um, so don't worry too much. And if we have some fun here, we'll talk a little bit about the proportions of uh, male versus female as well. I'm trying my best to knock all of this out today, but I also don't want to overwhelm you guys and just give you guys too much info. Um, but yes, we are going to be going over all of these different things okay we'll be doing all of these different things today so don't worry too much okay but let's go ahead and do a quick labeling here so again um, i'm using an eight head structure so just keep this in mind here this is going to be eight head structure you can vary your structures and proportions however you want over at powerhouse um what we do in in, in, in the studio i work at is we usually draw characters that are roughly about an eight head structure um at least as far as i've seen um for for drawing adult characters it's pretty consistent, pretty common. You'll see this in shows like Legend of Korra as well um, and a few other ones. So a head structure, pretty good. Um, but we're going to go here. This is going to be, again, one head, 
I'll do, let me see here. Let me kind of uh, shrink all this out. So this is going to be one half. I don't even know what this one half was referring to. Oh, I think it was referring to, we, we can get rid of this. It's fine. We don't need this actually. Um, this is referring to the, the length there. So um, one half here. So we do one, two, three, four. This is the halfway mark. Uh, five. Let me erase this. Six, seven, eight. Now, here are some of the key components here that I want to talk about, okay? So remember, this halfway mark right here, guys, this is going to be known as the greater trochanter, uh, also known as the head of the femur that you can actually find um, right here on the side of your hip, okay? I know this looks kind of sus. I swear it's not. We're just touching the side of our hip, and that's where you're going to find kind of that bony landmark. This is called the greater trochanter. I always forget how to spell it. Trochanter. That doesn't look right. Um, so if somebody in the chat can tell me the correct spelling, please and thank you, but it's close enough. <laughs> Greater trochanter, also known as the like head of the femur kind of area there. Uh, who made up that word? Not me. I'm not making up gibberish out here. Okay. Um, trochanter. Okay. So I might've added an H there, huh? Okay. Let me, let me correct that. Thank you. Thank you, chat. See, I know my terms. I just don't know how the spellings, the, the, the spelling, the spelling is like too much. Trochanter, huh? Trochanter? All right, I'm going to trust chat on this one. Though, honestly, I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little skeptical. Is that right? Hold on. I'm going to double check too, man. I'm going to double check. I, look, I'm not saying I'm not saying you guys are liars, but I think, I think I actually spelled it right. I think I spelled it right. <laughs> Somebody double check. I'm pretty sure I actually spelled it right the first time. Okay, a anyways. Um... Okay, moving back, moving back here. So let's go ahead and um, the bottom of the knee right here is going to be another important landmark. All right, so bottom of knee. And remember, these are going to be the halfway marks. So notice here from the halfway of the, the body down here, the, the, the latter kind of third, uh, latter fourth there, bottom of the knee. And then last but not least here, we have here the feet, right? Base of the foot here. So pretty, pretty solid. Oh, my bad. Wrong button. <laughs> He's seven feet tall normally. You think so? So again, it's going to vary, right? It's gonna be wrong, wrong button. Uh, greater trochanter according to Google. Nice. Okay. Do you have, um, do you have to know these names to draw better? Um, no, not at all. You don't have to draw the names at all. Okay. Um, Again, just knowing the general kind of proportions and stuff is going to be pretty solid. Um, but we can actually do a test for these things if you guys want. Um, we can grab like a character design and take a look at that together. I think that's always fun to do. Uh, like here's a, okay, here's an example actually from my, um, from Legend of Korra that I, that I did a while back. So let me show you guys really quick. Okay. Just for those of you who want to get to see like an application of this in um you know in animation how does this look like so here is an example here of a character mako from legend of korra if you guys have never seen the show it's okay um but you'll actually see here with with uh, with mako we got your one two three four five six seven heads right so you can use a seven head structure here for a character like mako break down the proportions and you'll actually see how these things kind of line up using seven heads again we're using eight heads but the reason why I'm using eight heads today and not seven heads is because I actually think the eight head structure is easier to divide and stuff. Like, I think it's easier to, to say, like, what is eight divided by two? What is four divided by two versus saying, OK, seven divided by two is three point five. And then you divide three point five by two. It's a weird number. It's just a lot of decimals and all of that stuff. So I prefer to use the a head structure and uh, a good number of shows do use the a head structure pretty, pretty regularly, actually. Um, for, for that very same reason. Also bots, hey, welcome back in. And um, actually, I'm not using a power mirror anymore. Um, I've actually upgraded and I'm using everything directly through HDMI. So I'm using HDMI and connecting that through a capture card um, out here. Yeah. A power mirror, never heard of her. Who's that? <laughs> Talking about my ex, a power mirror, out of here. Now we're on HDMI now and I think it's a lot smoother, a lot crispier. Who's she? Never heard of a power. <laughs> um, but other than that, I would say here, um, other kind of tips and tricks again, it's going to be, oh, here's one to, to keep in mind. I'll do it on the other side here. 
Um, here is one to kind of keep in mind for the, uh, for the torso, right? This right here is going to be the, uh, clavicle. Okay. Clavicle. We got here the 10th, uh, 10th rib of the rib cage. And last but not least, this would be a little bit, maybe more like right there. That's going to be right there. The bottom of the pelvis. Okay. All right, but these are what I would say are going to be the major labels um, that I would think about. Okay, snatched waist. Yeah, the man, the man's pretty, pretty fit. Not gonna lie. Do I watch Vinland Saga? I do watch Vinland Saga. I'm actually caught up on Vinland Saga. I didn't really like the first season, but the second season has been changing my mind about the show. I like how it's a little bit more chill and the character is more redeemable of a character, not as annoying. But yes. I've been watching Vinland Saga. Um, do you usually use the guidelines during your regular process or is there like a point where you just have to memorize? Um, so I don't use it in my regular process. Um, and it's not necessarily something you have to memorize. It's more just like practice. And over time, you start to build intuition. So I've shown you guys here, like for example, when we drew out um, last stream, I showed you guys how I did some dynamic poses, right? So for those of you who ever struggle with dynamic poses, um, I would say to check out my previous boot camp day, day 20, I think it was day 20. Um, but basically when I'm drawing stuff like this, I'm not actually measuring things out. Um, you start to build an intuition and a rough idea of how things work in 3d space and stuff to be able to do crazy poses like this, right? Where you have the feet going in, you know, the camera angle and all of that stuff. Um, and so I would say that understand the basics so that you don't have to necessarily use them all the time later, right? Because once you learn about these proportions, you'll start to recognize them more and more as you start drawing characters, as you start looking at references and all of that stuff. Does that make sense? So in my personal workflow, um, if in my personal workflow, I'm kind of chilling out here and just kind of, you know, drawing out some of the general shapes and stuff as I'm drawing them, but I'm not actually going in and measuring every little thing out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always tell people like, you know, practice these things and see it, but then use it to, uh, use it to train, um, use it to train your eye and your observational skills. Or for those of you who watch One Piece, use it to train your observational hockey. You know what I'm saying? Be able to observe things and understand the measurements for it. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered your question, uh, CK. That's a great question um, that, that you just asked. Okay, but cool. We've got here now the general proportions. Let me go ahead and lower the opacity a little bit. And let's actually just draw this character out for fun. I think I want to do a quick little kind of drawing with you guys. You know, just to kind of showcase some of the uh, some of the shape there of this character as we start applying some of the anatomy that we're seeing here. All right. Now, again, keep in mind that we are doing... Um, this character is going to be, I should say, a different... We're doing a bit of a different pose than what we have here for this character. So... Just kind of keep that in mind as we're uh, drawing this one out. But you'll kind of see here how we have from this mannequin shape, right? We can actually utilize a lot of this to be able to go in now and uh, to be able to go in and actually start drawing out more of a fleshed out character look. But we're using that rough mannequin and I think it's a pretty good kind of baseline as well to kind of just get things started. So here I'm going to change his view. So he's kind of, maybe he's looking up now instead of uh, looking down, right? So he's kind of, he's looking up at us, that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to start placing some of the, the components here now, like the neck, right? Um, and yeah, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, today's stream is going to be focused primarily on uh, proportions. So how to kind of simplify the proportions of the anatomy uh, of the human body. So that way you can do it for different styles and, and, and whatnot out here. Um, is it true that men have more of a V shape? Not necessarily. So part of the reason why you might see a V-shape commonly in, in male characters is actually m not, not even having to do with the hips and more having to do with the lat muscles here. So with more developed lats, it'll actually look like you have more of a taper down here. But if you take a look, if you took away this guy's lat muscles right here, if we took away his gains, look at that. Just your average dude. Just a regular man. We stripped him of his gains. He's sad now.
See? It's all in the lats. Where'd my lats go, he said. <laughs> Sorry, we're trolling. The, <laughs> we're bullying this guy. Hey, hey, hey I'm not. <laughs> why are we bullying him? Um, but no, it's all. Yeah, poor, poor guy. <laughs> it's all just in his lats. Um, and that's kind of how you get that taper. For those of you who are wondering, um, both in real life and in, in drawing and stuff, you can kind of do something, you know, focusing on that stuff will probably all you need to do. Um, but let's go in here now and let's do, um, let's kind of go in and lock out the, uh, the rest of the proportions here. And you'll kind of see here how I'm going to kind of utilize all the general proportions. But now when I'm actually drawing these things out, I don't always, you know, again, utilize the, all these basic shapes and stuff, because these are things that I think are more guidelines. But once you actually kind of go in and do this yourself, you can, you know, have fun with it. Um, but yeah, uh, again, the main reason why I'm covering this on stream today is because I know that there are some of you who do struggle with making sure your character proportions match up, right? Maybe you've drawn a character and you're just so confused why for some reason the arms look so long compared to everything else or why the legs look super short and you're kind of like man what the heck is going on and you keep trying to work at it and you're you know blindly going in but it just doesn't make sense right and so i kind of want to showcase for you guys like okay well for those of you who are struggling with that this is going to be how you can start to simplify that because this is actually what people do in um in the animation industry right we have to break down character designs and find a systematic way to express how the character works so that no matter who's drawing it, whether it's the, uh, you know, bunch of tens of tens of animators who work on it or the, or the storyboard artists or the designers, we all can draw the same thing consistently, right? We can all match things up and properly draw out the same character because we need some sort of guidance, um, to do that. And so having these kind of style references, having these, uh, proportional techniques and stuff can actually really help out a lot but you'll see right here all i'm really doing is actually just laying out some of the groundwork uh, that we've already established right so here we're going to talk a bit about pectoral muscles as well i think this will actually be interesting but um the pectoral muscles usually are going to be a little bit lower than the first um than the uh that first head length down but you can again just put it a little bit lower get comfortable with that and, and find different ways to convey it so you can kind of mix and match it around. Um, if Kasem isn't around, we don't get her free art classes. I hope, guys, I hope that I can stay here as long as, as, as I can um, on Twitch. <laughs> uh, free the nipple or does Twitch demonetize? Um, it's, not that, it's not that Twitch demonetize. I think actually Twitch is okay with the nips. But um, I, I've been told that I'm on the front page today, guys. And so, you know, I want to keep it nice and safe out here on the platform. I don't want to go too spicy out here, if you get what I'm saying. So we're going to just play it safe. You know, if we're going to be blocking nips. We might as well block all the nips out here. Um, yeah. Um, do you use the A-head rule for kids? Oh, no, we don't. We definitely don't. Um, so... Again, this is going to be the A head structure is for general adults. Um, but I've actually shown you guys right here um, when we draw out, for example, children. So I'll, I'll show it again for those of you guys who are coming in here. So here's a breakdown that I did for Legend of Korra um, when it comes down to drawing, like, let's say children, right? We're still going to be using the general guidelines that I talked about at the beginning of the stream about like the halfway from the top of the head to the pelvis all the way down to the to the bottom of the feet, right? So all of that stuff. Um, but you'll notice here that different, you know, ages will have different heights. So here we'll have a five head structure for a kid. Um, here, maybe you'll have a six head structure for kind of someone who's like in middle school, kind of that 13 to 15, 13 to 16 age range. Um, and so you'll see a lot of variety there when it comes to drawing. Um, but the main takeaways, again, are going to be those halfway proportions that I mentioned, right? So uh, for example, here, from the top of the head all the way down to the pelvis right here, that greater trochanter is going to be the halfway mark all the way down here. And then that halfway mark from here to here, that's going to be the bottom of the knee, right? So you can still use some of the general guidelines, but the head structure, don't get too fixated on that because I feel like that's really where people get caught up and they're like, okay, I got to measure every single head. Like how many of you guys in the chat have ever done that? Put an F in the chat if you've ever tried to do your proportions. Like maybe you did learn proportions and you're kind of like, okay, how many, let me head there, this there, this there, mm, you know? 
Like don't you don't don't feel like you got to do some of that. Okay? Like that's kind of the opposite spectrum. Like there there are people who who don't use proportions at all and they scratch their head because nothing looks good. And then there are two then there is the other side of it where people are too stuck on proportions and they feel like their drawings are too stiff. Because they're just like, oh man, what's going on? I got to make sure these things, you know, these things land and all that. You know, finding a healthy balance with anything you do, but in particular with uh, art and stuff, I think is very important, right? So always help. I always tell you guys, use the guidelines that I'm covering out here as uh, a way to get started, but don't let it be the only thing that you do. These are very much guidelines and not necessarily, um, not necessarily the end all be all, this is what you must do kind of thing. Now, um, going back here to the drawing, by the way, I don't know if you guys want me to talk about anatomy today. I feel like it's not an anatomy stream, right? Maybe, maybe not. I think we'll keep it nice and chill today. Um, 425, Paul Dogs, uh, Gabrietta, Berg, Spetzel, and everybody else coming in here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think we're chilling today. I don't think, I don't think I need to overwhelm you guys with too much anatomy, right? Um, spine, spine, uh, spine line. Yeah, I think so too. I think getting a good gesture for the spine, not only is good for proportion, um, but it also is really helpful as well for, um, getting a good gesture, right? Gesture is very nice. <laughs> very important, uh, here. I'll, here's what I'll do. I'm not going to talk about the proportions, but I will kind of lay out some of the anatomy and stuff for those of you who, you know, are at least looking for some of that, some of that juice, Okay, there you go. Just giving him some crazy toned abs. Why not? Why not? Let's just do it. Uh, tenth rib again is going to be locked in here. So we did. We do talk about the tenth rib. I think that one's actually important. Um, but here we're going to lay in the obliques, the oblique muscles. Taper those obliques down to the remainder there of the pelvis, um, like so. There you go. Nice and easy. Uh, yeah, grab some tea, some virtual tea. I actually need to drink some tea myself. Poor guy has abs, but not any friends. Yeah, we. what What does this guy have when we take away his lats? Um, but yes, welcome in, guys. Welcome in, everyone. So many people out here today. It's actually crazy. Um, I hope you guys are... Um, hope you guys are having a good time today. Enjoying the stream. Um, is it possible to mix gesture and dynamic pose? Oh, yeah, that's probably the only way to do I think uh, not the only but I think it's one of the best ways to get some good dynamic poses um, I, I again, I'll, sh I'll I'll change it to this view for those of you who are looking but like um, In my last stream we actually covered how to do um, dynamic poses um, stuff like this and what you start off with is actually a combination of gesture, uh, 3D form for for shortening, and then last but not least, um, getting in there some of the proportions, right? So that's actually what we covered out here on my stream uh, before. And I'm trying to see if there's another example I could show you guys that'll give you an idea. Um, we did some here as well of a lean beef patty. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but I showed you guys how I kind of break down uh, these kind of more dynamic shots as well with characters like her. Uh, or references like hers, I should say. But yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, I think my full body uh, anatomy is great, but my face looks like poop. Okay, so for those of you who are struggling with um, proportions of for the face and all that stuff, the reason why I'm not covering it as much right now is actually because we've we've covered the face a lot on my on my streams, and so I have a YouTube channel. Uh, just for that as well. So you guys can actually tune in um, to my YouTube channel and grab those resources um, out there. Um, they're free. Again, um, I teach art out here on Twitch for those of you guys who are new. And one of my goals is to try to make a full course that anybody can watch and follow along with, download the cheat sheets for and worksheets for. Um, because I'm trying to make art education as accessible to everybody out here on the internet, whether you're watching from Twitch or YouTube. Um, and the big driver behind all of that is because I understand what it's like to not be able to pay for, for education, whether it is art or anything else. Um, and, um, I want to make sure that, you know, as long as you're willing to learn, 
there's always a resource out there, whether it's my streams or any, any other content out there. Um, but yeah, but also, you know, I like, I like going against the multi-billion dollar art school industry. <laughs> <laughs> yep we're out there guys is the ksm crew versus the multi-billion dollar art school industry i'm on their most wanted list out here every time they tune into my streams and they're like yo we need to stop this man stop him big art yeah <laughs> the big art industry but luckily for us twitch is on our side today because they uh they they for some reason decided to put me on the front page today so shout out to twitch for for helping make art education uh, more accessible as well Damn, who would have thought, man? Twitch is out here on our side. Let's go. Uh, but that's that is a little bit about me. I'll do a more proper intro later for those of you who are curious. But I try not to give too much of an intro for myself, uh, too much on my streams because I know it can potentially sound a little repetitive and stuff. Um, yeah, how's it going, Ricky? Welcome back in. We're doing well today. I'm talking about proportions today. Fun, fun, fun proportions and all that good jazz. Twitch is against a big art confirmed. I never said that. I, I never said any of that. I'm just saying that that the Twitch is supporting our streams. <laughs> I am not a um, I'm not speaking for Twitch. OK, I just want to legally state out here. Um, I am not an employee of Twitch. Twitch, please don't get mad at me. <laughs> the viewers are, are misinterpreting me, man. Um. <laughs> case okay, so i want to learn how to draw chris pratt mario but can't can you show me that's a tough request man that's like a forbidden that's a forbidden jutsu right there that's a dangerous one the the, the legendary chris pratt mario drawing oof uh we might have to we might have to do that on another day man that's a tough one <laughs> chris that's so specific why chris pratt mario why 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 him specifically he's just a voice actor you know it's it's okay um Let's see here. Um, in case some of you ever given a tutorial on how to draw fur? Um, not yet. Probably later, maybe later in the year. Um, they they get to make money off. Yeah, that's that's true. They they do get a little bit of that too, because of Chris Pratt. Now I understand. Chris Pratt is is pretty cool. Um, have I been drawing my entire life, or did you start while you were still a software engineer? Ah, that's actually a great question. Yeah, so for those of you who are wondering, um, just really quick, I did used to be a software engineer. I worked in the tech industry in, in SF, Silicon Valley, uh, for about five years before I actually decided to pivot and, and want to start working in um, animation and stuff. So, uh, But to answer your question in particular, I, I did used to draw a bunch when I was younger. So when I was a kid, you know, I would watch those Saturday morning cartoons the good stuff, right? Watching my Jackie Chan adventures, uh, Shaolin Showdown. I'd be watching my Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, Pokemon, all of that stuff. And I would draw, you know, like, like most kids do when they're young, do a little doodle, right? Um, as I got older, I would still try to draw a little bit more, though Asian parents, I don't know if you guys, I don't know, are Asian here or understand some of that stuff. But, you know, my Asian parents were like, yeah, focus on school, okay? You know, drawing, that's cute. That's for the uh, that's for the baby stuff. But you're getting older, so you should probably start focusing on school instead. Um, and so that was kind of what happened there. But I, you know, I still tried to draw here and there when I could. Um, I decided after high school that I wanted to go to art school, and so I applied for art school. I I went there for a semester. I realized that I couldn't afford it, um, and so I had to drop out of art school. And I decided to basically go in, give up doing art all together and kind of give up pursuing art and became a software engineer instead. So I became a software engineer or I, I studied computer science, got a degree in computer science. Um, and then I um, didn't do any art for about six years. Basically, there was a whole six year period where I didn't do any art at all whatsoever. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, the, the, someone's asking the question, what made me feel like transferring? Um, I was depressed. Man, I felt like my life was just, I was just not having fun. I was doing, I was going into my job and I was doing all these things. And I just felt like this is not what I wanted to do. This is not what I was meant to do necessarily. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy with destiny and stuff, but it felt like, it felt like I was wasting my energy, investing my time doing something that I didn't really care about. And I wanted to do something different. And so I started to draw uh, more for fun. 
to be honest. Um, I was drawing not, not, not to because I thought I was going to get a job or anything, but I just wanted to draw for fun. I wanted to make some art friends and, and all of that stuff. And um, eventually I started to realize like, you know what? I actually really, really like drawing and I, I kind of like it more. Um, I kind of like it more than I do uh, being a software engineer. Maybe there's a possibility out there for me to, to do it full time, right? To actually make it a career and stuff. And so I quit my job in 2021. Um, I decided to go full time, uh, full time as an artist, both as a freelancer and as a content creator here on Twitch. And then in 2022, I was doing a lot more um, commission work and a lot more contract work, freelance work. And eventually towards the end of 2022 was when I started doing uh, my, my animation studio work uh, for Powerhouse Animation. If you guys don't know Powerhouse, uh, they actually... Um, they, they made Castlevania. So I always tell people, cause people don't really know powerhouse, the studio, but people know Castlevania. So I always tell people, um, I work for the studio that made Castlevania. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my, my transition. And I've honestly, I've, I've never been happier to, to be honest with you guys. Um, I think I'm in a very crazy place in my life where I can, work in the animation studio that I, that I like, you know, really love and I appreciate the work of. And I also get to, um, I also get to stream on Twitch here and, and help teach art, which is something that I've always wanted to do to help other people, you know, um, be able to learn and stuff. So it's, I don't know. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty happy. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Um, I'm surprised that your parents let you even apply. Mine just forced you to, to major in law. You know, I think part of it too was because I, I, you know, I did, I did keep up my grades and stuff and I, um, I tried to save up some money for art school. I think I was just too naive. Honestly speaking, I was too naive growing up. Um, and I thought that art school would be super, you know, like cheap and stuff and affordable, but I realized like, I, I just, it just, I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I couldn't pay for it. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess not, but you know, we found our way back and, um, yeah, I think if anything, I don't want to necessarily say that like, oh, if I can do it, you can do it too. But it's more of a testament for me to tell you guys that if you guys want to pursue a career in art, I personally don't think it's too late. Um, and even for those of you who are not necessarily trying to pursue a career in art, but maybe you're just looking to, you know, get back into that hobby right? Like, I think, I think it's never too late to, to get to, to pick up art, whether as a hobby or as a career. And I think it's fun. I, I, I really do enjoy it. Is it stressful? Yeah, it can be very stressful, but, um, I think it's one of those things where the more time and, and, and effort you put in the, the less stressful it becomes. Mm, debatable, debatable. I have to think about that actually. <laughs> Um, my tutorials on YouTube are so good. Thank you. I appreciate those of you who check out my YouTube channel. Um, what will I be doing after the 30 day character design bootcamp? So this is going to be the first semester of my bootcamp. There's going to be a second semester. So this is like the winter spring quarter, um, of my, of my first 30 day bootcamp. After this one, we're going to be doing another 30 day bootcamp. Um, but that one will be focused more on drawing different types of characters. So for example, um, drawing different body types, drawing different ages, drawing facial expressions, drawing different poses for your characters. So for example, how many of you guys in the chat have ever struggled, put an F in the chat, if you've ever struggled with drawing characters sitting down? You're like, man, k -Sam, I try to draw characters sitting and it's just like, huh? yo, what the heck? You know what I'm saying? Put an F in the chat because my next boot camp will basically be covering all of those things. So it's like this boot camp is primarily focused on just showing you guys the basics of drawing characters. I want to give you guys the fundamentals, right? Some of the things that you can use as building blocks to start learning how to develop your designs. Um, but then the next boot camp will actually really jump in on, in actually putting your characters into scenes. We'll talk about drawing different types of characters um, and, and all of that stuff. And then I'm thinking that at the end of the year, 
I've already kind of planned it. I know I, I might sound crazy right now, but I've actually planned out my content for like the whole year. Um, after we finish that boot camp, we're actually going to be doing something which I think will be really fun, which is we're going to be talking about designing characters from different genres. So we might look at, for example, drawing the sci-fi genre for stuff. We might look at drawing fantasy genre. We might even play a game like God of War and then maybe talk about drawing stuff like in a that fantasy setting versus a fantasy setting of... Um, I don't know, give me a different game. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do as we kind of keep moving forward with all of this content and stuff. Um, but it's, again, I'm telling you guys, my goal here is to try to replace, I want to try to replace art school industry and give you guys free content. Teach art as free as I can, make it as accessible as I can on the platform because honestly, I, I think everyone should, should, should be able to, to learn how to draw if they want to. Yeah. Um, but there you go. That's, um, that's hopefully the answer to your question. If you guys are excited about that again, leave a follow out here. Um, Kasem, how did you get your first several freelance clients? Were you big on DeviantArt before then? Mm, I was not. My first clients were actually all from Twitch. I'm, I'm very thankful that, um, I have a presence here on Twitch and I've been, I've been thankful that people have hired me to, to work on projects because they see how I work out here on Twitch and stuff. But most of my major clients and freelance work that I did back in those days were actually from just being on social media, uh, primarily being on, uh, being on Twitch. Uh, I don't know if I got any jobs off of Instagram, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh, the answer to that question. Um, so many follows today. Welcome in, everybody. Um, it's actually nice to hear you took such a long break from art. So many artists on here have been doing it constantly since they were teens or younger. So your story's inspiring for other people who had to do it similar. Yeah, you know, um, not not to put down people who've been grinding their whole life and stuff. Um, but I always tell people like, actually, you know, taking a break can actually be really great for your mental health. <laughs> because I had a pretty bad, uh, I had a pretty bad relationship with art. Um, when I was in art school and all that stuff, I had a lot of imposter syndrome. I used to feel like so stressed because I had to, I, I didn't have the money again to pay for things. And so I was kind of feeling like, man, I'm so trash. Everybody's better than me, but I can't even pay for the school. Um, by the way, I do run ads on my stream every hour. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. But if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub, but either way, thank you for the support. And I hope to see you guys after the ad break. Um, but yeah, man, I had such an unhealthy relationship with art when I was in art school. Um, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You go on Instagram, you see some crazy young artist who's like half your age, maybe they're like 13, 14 or whatever. And you look at their art and you're kind of like, yo, what the heck? I was never this good at 13, right? And you start wondering, like, am I really cut out for this? And like, I can't even pay for it. So what's the point? And so it, I think it was actually very valuable for me to step away from art all those years and kind of reestablish a healthier relationship of what it means for me to be an artist and why do I even try to pursue these, these things in the first place, right? Trying to remember almost why I got into art in the first place, um, which was, again, Saturday morning cartoons, wanting to make stories and, and just kind of contribute to that space. Um, how much art do I do on a daily slash weekly basis? How much time do you have for other things? That's a great question. And this might don't, don't do what I do, but I, I draw for about 12 hours a day. Um, so that's about 60, 60 hours on the weekdays. And then I draw for about four hours on the weekends. So about eight hours, so I draw about 70 hours a week, 12 hours a day, roughly. Um, that's, that's what I do. Um, but that's because I like what I do I, and, and I, I enjoy drawing. But yeah, you don't have to be drawing a lot like I do. That's honestly a lot of, of drawing. So just just keep that in mind. Um, let's see. How hard is it to make a fully original character nowadays? Mm, I don't I, It depends. I don't know. It depends on what you mean by fully original. A character that nobody nobody has ever thought of. You know, I don't know. That's... It's hard to determine whether or not somebody has ever made the character before, you know? So I, I'm not sure. That's a tough question, I guess. Um, 
what were the first requests? I mean, what exactly you, um, you drew for them? I, well, when I first started doing uh, commissions and stuff, I was mostly just chilling, doing like, uh, mostly just chilling and doing fan art for people, those kind of commission work. But as I actually, um, what's it called? As I got into bigger contract stuff, it was more like character designs for different productions. So people would be like, Hey, we got a story. Here's a script for the characters. Here's a description for the characters. Can you come up with some designs? We want some rotations. We want some variations, expressions. Um, all of that stuff was kind of the, what I was doing for freelance work. Um, yeah. Um, have I agreed to doing commission work in the past? I have no idea for an Avatar Legends tattoo, but I had I don't know. Um, yes, I've done I've done a good amount of commission work in the past. So before I started doing studio work and stuff, I was mostly just doing a lot of freelance work, uh, whatever I can to get by. Um, but I've moved away from that model only because. And here's the thing: I actually love freelance work a lot. I think there's a lot of flexibility in doing freelance work. My only problem is um, it's hard to do freelance and have a, a stable monthly income because I think sometimes with uh, commission work they kind of come in waves, right? So like holiday season, people might have a lot of commissions for you, uh, but then you know, random months there might just be nobody, nobody, nobody wants anything requested, or it might just be not as much, and so. I was kind of like, eh, I like freelance and the flexibility of freelance, but I also like knowing that I can cover things every month and not have to burn myself out one month to, to pick up like multiple commission contracts um, and stuff like that or multiple freelance contracts. So it can be tough. I think freelance can be very rewarding and very satisfying when you get to pick and choose your time, but also can be really tough as well. Um, let's see. Recently bought our books from China and Japan. Um, inspiration and learn from their character. Oh, nice. It's super awesome. Yeah, those books are always great to read. Um, but yeah, but for those of you who are coming in right now, thank you so much for all the follows today. I haven't said all the follows yet, but there's just so many today. I, I, I don't really know why. I think someone told me earlier I'm on the front page still, uh, which is insane. So thank you for those of you if you are coming up from the front page and stuff. I uh, really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, there's so many follows and I just haven't been able to say, uh, I haven't been able to call you guys out. I'll read a few. I'll read a few names. But again, if I don't say your name, it's not because I hate you or anything. It's just, <laughs> there's just so many of you today. A uh, few, pa, uh, Pavi, Ramo, Examo, Dodger, uh, Zet, Fl Flaming June, uh, Macha Marine, uh, Vanessa Walsh, Nico, and everybody else who came in here today. Thank you so much for all the follows. You guys are super dope. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, today's stream. Yeah, dealing with clients alone is super tough. Yes. Um, let's see here. Uh, found me through the recommended channel. Yeah, but for those of you who are following me um, and, and are willing to share, I'd love to know how you guys came across my stream today. Did you find me through recommended? Did you find me through the front page? Did you find me through um, a raid or perhaps... You found me through my YouTube channel, which I think would be super dope if you did find me through uh, through my YouTube channel because we have been putting in a lot of work there, a lot of hours on my on my channel there. But all right, guys, um, this right here is the um, rough proportion for this character in uh, front view. OK, so we got a little front view of our character design. Nice and easy. Noish. There you go. I like it. I like it. It looks good. Happy. And again, we can change these proportions up pretty consistently, pretty regularly, right? <laughs> again, if I didn't say your name, it's, it's look, I'm not there's I'm not picking favorites out here, okay? I just, just there's a lot of names. So I have to I gotta just I see what I see. I say what I say. All right, cool. So we've got here our anatomy, um, eight head structure for this guy, um, slightly different proportions than what we had earlier. But overall, I would say this is a pretty decent structure. Uh, with the eight head structure, you can get some really tall uh, looking characters, right? But there you go. Um, I would say this is pretty, we're pretty much done with this one. Let me go ahead and kind of, uh, fix up a little bit here. I think this leg 
needs to go back a little bit there. There you go. And then that means that this leg is also going to get moved up just a tad bit. But overall, I would say the proportions are here. The gesture is there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how you tackle here the general proportions. Now, again, um, we've got here some of the simplified structures. So if you want to go see that again, this is what we broke down. But now let's move on to um, let's move on to a different pose. All right. So I'm going to put away this guy right here. See ya. And let's move. Um, how should we approach this? Let me see here. Let's go ahead and move this one over here. I'm just going to put it here because we're going to, we're going to, I need, I need the space. So I'm going to put that away. Um, let's bring in the next reference right here. We've got this girl and we're going to talk about the pose and side view now. All right. We're going to lay out some general proportions there for side view, um, character design as well. So here's, here's that model that we have. And cool. Let's uh, let's jump in on that. But let me actually, I want to add a little bit of color here while I read some of the messages in chat. Um, do these character design bootcamp sheets get uploaded to any of the subscriber channels once they are deleted after the stream? Um, I think you might be looking at the wrong channel, uh, Arnold. So uh, for those of you wondering, yes, they do get updated. And I'll actually show you guys where they are because I think you might be in the wrong place. So for those of you who are subscribers out here, fun fact, not only do you get emotes and all that stuff, but you also get access to all of my courses that I did last year. So there's three courses you can take um, from my last uh, stream or last year. Um, but there's also the ones from this year as well. So under worksheets and cheat, she uh, cheat sheets in the subscriber studio, you'll actually see all the Photoshop PSD files that I upload out here for all the worksheets that we cover. So these are just some examples right here. And also here are all the cheat sheets out here um, so far that I have for this year. And these are all going to be part of my digital art book, uh, which I'll be releasing at some point later this year. But these get updated pretty regularly. So the last time I updated this was actually um, two days ago or a couple of days ago, four days ago. So these are these are where you're going to find all of these. And these are the PSD files um, available to all of my subscribers um, out here. But again, if you guys are just watching live right now, um, you don't have to be subscribed because I always give you guys free stuff to download like today's worksheet, um, a general guide here on proportions, and then also one that I did for Legend of Korra uh, right here. All right. So there you go. Good, good old free content out here. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Also, thank you for the follows, uh, Crazy Squirrel, and thank you for the sub, Sinoki. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sheesh. Um, do I plan on doing mentorship in the future? I don't know. Um, I don't know only because I know it's going to take a lot of time and I, I'm kind of busy <laughs> for lack of, for lack of better words, guys, I'm, I'm a little busy with my schedule. Um, but I would love to do mentorship if it's something people here would be interested in actually, you know, um, interested in, in doing, let me know in the chat. Just, I don't know, tell me, put a little, Hey, me in the chat. If, um, you would be interested in doing mentorship, it's yeah, it's, it's a little bit of, um, it's a bit of a commitment and I don't know if I have the time to commit for it because you can imagine I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot of stuff from, from Twitch to YouTube to studio work. Um, so I'm trying to keep my sanity as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it so that I don't go crazy out here, but I have thought about it many times about opening up mentorship and, um, doing all that stuff. But in many ways, I, the way that I think about it too, for those of you guys who are looking for a mentor, um, this, I would say you can also treat this as a mentorship as well, right? So like do your drawings, uh, do the stuff that I'm doing out here, ask me questions on stream, um, upload it on the discord channel, get feedback on it. Like you can actually treat this as a, um, you can actually treat this as a, what's it called? Um, as a mentorship, if you want to like a free kind of chill, you know, live stream mentorship, um, the references you drew from, yes. Um, it should have it. It should have, um, it should have them on there. If they don't have them on there, that would be interesting, but the PSD files should. The, the photos themselves might not have it um, because there's just so many drawings and stuff, but the references will be in the PSD files. I don't usually delete the, the PSD files. Or I don't delete the references in the PSD files. 
Um, I just I just hide them for the for the picture. Um, yo, thank you for the thousand bits. Damn, let's go. Sheesh. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you so much. We'll do a raffle spin later. Okay, we'll do that one in a bit. Um, the winner's destiny for a mentorship. Oh yeah, that is true. There are thirty. Um, there I do offer thirty minute uh thirty minute one on one sessions. Um, as a prize on my raffle spin. So every thousand bits, we spin a raffle, and then someone could win a chance at at a at a little mini mini mentorship. But yes. Um, other than that, I don't plan on doing anything specific with mentorships. Uh, anytime soon. Thank you so much, Shadow Wolf, uh, for the 1,000. Uh, what's my role at Powerhouse? Yeah, so at Powerhouse, I do a couple things. Um, primarily, I work on, um, I work on some animation stuff. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll get some some rough animations that I need to go actually put the characters on model for, or I'll lay out the characters and make sure that they actually are following the scene. Sometimes I'll do the full end to end animation since Powerhouse actually does a lot of in house animation as well. Um, so sometimes you'll get like a rough um, animatic of what's going on with the character, uh, and then I have to be, you know actually put the characters in perspective, draw them out doing their motions, line them, color them, and add stuff like shadows as well. Um, that way is handed off to um, handed off to compositors. On occasion, we also do stuff like drawing over stuff. So you know, Powerhouse will work with some third party studios that are overseas, um, our third party partners and stuff. And so sometimes they'll send us stuff which is they don't it doesn't look that good. And so it's our job to be like, hey, I got to draw over, critique your stuff, make sure to fix all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, a lot of character work, a lot of animation work, a lot of stuff with drawing characters in perspective, drawing characters on model, drawing characters from different perspective and all of that stuff. Um, but it all revolves around drawing characters. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Breadbot to, to Breadbot TV. Mm, what programs do I use when I'm working? I use CSP actually. CSP is the primary software that I use. It's pretty good. Um, Pretty, pretty, pretty solid um, for that. But yeah, welcome in everyone who's coming in right now. Thank you so much for all the follows today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream. Um, Togata from, from My Hero Academia. Which one is that one again? Is that the, um, is that the Mirio guy? Oh, Lemillion. Okay. Um, let's see here. Is it guaranteed to get critiqued by you on stream? No. It's not guaranteed. Um, nothing that gets posted on there is guaranteed to get critiqued by me on stream. Um, but every month I do hold a critique section and I do usually I'll pick out, I'll pick out some from the sub studio, uh, from my subscribers. And then I'll also pick out some from, uh, some from people who are watching live and stuff. So I try to do a bit of both, but I do prioritize my subscribers and stuff. All right. Um, yeah, it's the eyes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, but cool. Let's go in now and let's actually lay out this this pose here. And for this one, I'm going to be a little bit more loose. So to kind of just show you guys, um, I'm going to show you guys how I tackle kind of like this drawing here, but we're not going to be using all the crazy proportions too much, right? I'm just going to use kind of a general guideline again for the proportions to show you guys that you don't have to you know, follow all the specific rules, but more of using it as a general approach to help you, um, to help you get started with your drawings. Okay. So I'm going to start off here again. I like starting off with the torso. So we're going to be drawing kind of this side view pose, um, but simplified shapes can go a long way. And I know here that, for example, the clavicle is going to be here. The 10th rib is going to land kind of right here. And so using that roughly as a general distance will help me also place where I want the pelvis to be as well too, right? So you can kind of see here, I'm using those proportions that we covered earlier to help actually make it easier for me to start laying out where I want my characters to be. Because if I know, for example, that this is where I want that rib cage to be roughly, okay, then I can know, I know how far down I should be placing the pelvis, right? From here, I know where I want that greater trochanter to be right here. So I can actually go down now and find where I want that base of the knee to be as well. And then from that base of the knee, I know from here to here, it's going to come down all the way here. You see what I'm saying? So even without the reference, I could do all of this um, just from placing in a few of the lines already. So it's actually pretty nice to have a general idea of uh, proportions because these proportions can, again, go really a long way for locking in um, and solving a lot of your problems when it comes to 
uh, when it comes to uh, drawing your characters and, and, and all of that stuff. But hopefully that made sense. I don't know if you guys saw what I, what I just did there. Um, I'm, I'm again just using here some of the general techniques we talked about earlier and I'll you and, and leveraging that to be able to quickly draw some pretty consistent proportions um, on my on this character here. Now I am using the reference, but again, we could put this reference away and we could be good. This, this is all we need, I think, to be able to uh, draw out this character that we have. So we're going to go ahead here, uh, put the neck on there, the ears on here as well. There you go. Um, instructions unclear. The house is on fire. I'm sorry. If I, yeah, if I went a little too fast and your house is on fire right now, look, it's okay. So it'll be, it'll be all right. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Just pause, rewind. Oh wait, you're watching on Twitch. Okay. You guys can't do that, but on YouTube, you'll be okay. Okay. If you're watching on YouTube, it's all right. You can rewind, rewatch it again. And you're chilling. Uh, you're working with less guidelines on faces, letting intuition do the driving. Yes. And this is kind of the great thing too, is again, I want to remind you guys that these proportions don't be stuck on the proportions. Let the proportions, you know, help guide you and stuff. But as you start practicing more and more, let intuition, um, as um, someone just stated in the chat, let that be the thing that actually helps you kind of establish whether or not something looks good or not too. Because here's something that I'll actually tell you guys. Sometimes the reference can actually be a little, a little boring. You mean, you look at a reference, you're like, eh, you know what? I can do something better. And here's an example of that. Actually, here's an exercise that we might, we will probably cover this, um, in this boot camp. maybe, maybe day 23 or day 24 of the boot camp will cover it, but I'll show you guys an exercise that I did a while back with you guys last year. Um, where what we actually did was, um, let me find it real quick. Um, what we did was this, I showed you guys, here's a reference picture. Okay. So I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break down this pose. We're going to break down the structure. We're going to break down the proportions, right? And then from here, I'm going to ask you guys to say, all right, let's actually draw that same pose, but this time from imagination, let's go ahead and rotate the form now a little bit sideways and let's go ahead and see how that looks like. And then once you feel good about that, let's actually, you know what? Let's actually lower the horizon line a little bit more as well. So now let's draw that same pose from imagination again, but this time let's shift it down and let's see how that looks like. And then if you feel good about all of that stuff, let's go take it even a step further and let's actually bring the horizon line up really high there and let's go ahead and see how this looks like instead, right? If you're looking kind of top down at something and notice how these poses right here were actually all derived from this one reference. But you can kind of see how if you understand the basic structure and the basic forms, we'll be able to do hopefully some of this stuff in the boot camp. We'll cover it on day 24. So today's day 21. So this Saturday, we'll probably do this exercise. But again, I'm showing you guys this, um, this as an example to, to let you know that you don't have to be copying your reference, right? Like you can use the reference and all that stuff, but let the reference just be a general guideline, um, and, and have, um, you know, find, find the things that you feel like will look cool and aesthetic and be able to learn how to do that as well. Right? Like how many of you guys in the chat, be honest with me here, put an F in the chat guys. If you've ever spent a little bit too much time Okay, looking at references and trying to find that quote unquote right reference. And maybe you spent more time looking for references than you actually did drawing. Or maybe even worse, you spent all that time looking for references and you didn't even end up drawing afterwards. You're like, okay, let me go on Instagram real quick. Let me go on Pinterest real quick. Ooh, let me go search up the perfect reference. And you're just like, hmm, you do all that. You spend hours doing that. And you're like, wait a minute, I haven't even drawn anything. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll draw tomorrow instead. You know what I'm saying? So I always tell you guys, don't feel like you have to find that right reference. Instead, um, learn how to utilize references as a general guideline and be able to then from there, you know, be flexible and add your own twists and stuff. Cause it's hard. I think finding the exact specific reference that is going to be matching the drawing you're doing. Whew, that's tough work. That's tough to do. Kasem's being my inner thoughts. Look, the only reason why I call you guys out, there's, there's two reasons why I call you guys out. The first reason I call you guys out is because 
I, I do these things all the time as well. It was something I used to struggle with all the time when I was still starting out as an artist. But the other reason why I call you guys out is because I know no one else is. I know that, you know, if I don't call you out, guys, who else is going to call you guys out? Not yourself. <laughs> right. So I'm trying to help you guys. out. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be tough with you guys because I want to help. I want to help you guys grow. I know there's a lot of you guys out here who want to get better as an artist. You want to you want to see your skills improve and stuff. Um, and so I want to help you guys out as much as I can. Not just with all the technical stuff that we cover out here, but also with uh, the other stuff. Oh, thank you, Klopp, for that. Thank you for the prime sub. It's okay. I have this is what my YouTube's channel is for. For those of you who can't watch me live, we got the YouTube videos out here. All my tutorials will be uploaded on YouTube, um, and they're free to watch. Just a heads up, my boot camp and all of that stuff, guys. They are free to watch, um, and these are these are again tutorial videos that are super long. These are not your five ten minute easy hacks and tips to draw. These are long form videos that I want you guys to be able to have access to. And um, I try to make these as as good quality as I can to the same level as all the online schools and um, and art schools that I've been to and I've attended and stuff. I want to put them on part of that, but they're free to grab. They're free to watch. Um, just make sure you're put the t putting in the time. And uh, yeah, that's 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 about it. That's all that I ask. Put the time in. Put the practice in, and uh, yeah, profit from that, and and you'll be better off. Um, How's it going, Clop? Appreciate you coming in here. Um, but all right, let's go ahead now and kind of draw out this this character. You can kind of see what I'm doing, right? I'm kind of laying out here all the basic proportions that we talked about earlier. Um, but I'm also, again, I'm not like actually measuring out how many heads tall this is going to be. I'm using kind of just general shapes there and techniques. If we want to afterwards, we can actually review this and see how many heads tall it's going to be. I'm actually kind of curious to see. So we might we might do something like that. Um, but yeah, notice here we're just kind of we're kind of keeping it nice and light. I'm not I'm not trying to do too much with um, with the measurements, but I'm still thinking about proportions. So proportions are always going to be um, proportions are always going to be a key factor here, whether or not you're actually drawing in those guidelines that we mentioned in the previous uh, pose. So let me go ahead and shrink some of this. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. I'm doing well. I'm doing well for those of you who are uh, wondering. Yes. I uh, celebrated my birthday yesterday with uh, with my family, with my parents. Yesterday, it was not my birthday. It was actually last weekend, but you guys may or may not know that I did a 24-hour stream with all of you guys. And so I actually celebrated my birthday with you guys first um, before I did it with my family. So just know, just know where you guys are in the hierarchy here. Okay, <laughs> you guys got to spend it with me first, um, but I did do that last week, and then yesterday I spent it with my um, with my parents. No, no, I didn't do a subathon with my parents. We didn't go bald. Okay, we just had a regular dinner, regular Filipino food. Which, by the way, I'm Filipino. Um, shout out to my fellow Filipinos out here, my Asians, my Pacific Islanders, Southeast Asians. Always got a rep out here, you know. Um, Got to make sure I'm representing my my community and the overall Asian Pacific Islander community. The bald art teacher, me? Could never be. Not me. Who knows? I guess I should never say never. Um, but yeah, that's um that's how I was doing. How about you guys? Um, how would you guys rate your um? If you guys could rate your week last week out of ten. How would you rate it? Would you would you give it a seven? Would you give it a ten? Would you give it a one or a two? Let me know in the chat. I would say last week actually was a pretty solid nine. I give it a nine, and that's pretty rare to give because not most weeks are nines. But you know what? It was my birthday week, and I feel like if there was ever a week to give a nine, it's probably gonna be that week because it's yeah, it doesn't get better than that. After that, I'm back to work. <laughs> Honestly, I think I might have had too much fun. I might have had too much fun during uh, last week because now I'm kind of like, man, I kind of don't want to work. I kind of just want to chill, 
and uh, eat yummy food and do nothing for a long time. But you know, we got to we got to go back to work. We got to go back to grinding and stuff. Um, you got a speeding ticket? Oh man, sorry to hear about that. Damn, that's rough. A second one at that too. So not even the first one. Sheesh. Um, let's see here. Last week was an eight. This week started off from a five. It's a Monday. Now I get it. Mondays are tough. Uh, we're starting going, calling you Toretto. <laughs> I don't have Twitch followers. Wait, wait, wait. I don't, I don't have Twitch followers. I got family. There you go. Welcome to Fast and Furious 11 Twitch, Twitch streamer edition. Sheesh. We raced each other out here with the fastest internet and the highest FPS. Don't even at me with my uh, RTX 4, uh, 4060 out here. All right. Family. There you go. <laughs> Family with a PH. Okay, but um, yeah, this is the rough, um, the rough proportions that we locked in here uh, for this character. You guys can kind of see. Uh, we kind of just did a quick one, right? Easy peasy, nothing too insane. Hopefully this one was helpful to kind of see. Um, I'll go over um, some of the things that I did again for those of you who are tuning in just now. But basically, again, I just took here, I took here the top of the head and I said top of the head all the way down here to, um, let me do it on this side, all the way. So the top of the head here, all the way down to the greater trochanter, right? This distance right here should roughly be, and, and, and we're going to test this one out because again, I didn't do the measurements while I was drawing it. Um, but it should roughly be where the bottom of the foot is. So not bad. I think this foot's a little bit long or the legs a little bit longer. So we're going to go ahead and just correct that slightly. Uh, I'll go like this. Let me go ahead and do that. But you can kind of see here, we can utilize some of these general proportions to kind of start locking in some of the drawings that we're doing today. And so it's not even, it's not even, uh, not only a great way to draw characters consistently, but also a great way to double check your, uh, Double check your drawings as well. Halfway mark here for the knee. So it looks like the, the lower leg there is a little bit longer as well. So I might actually go ahead here and bring this knee uh, down a little bit like that. Just to kind of get some of that length there. And then maybe I'll bring this knee a little bit longer as well too. So I like that. Uh, other proportions that we can lock into and check is going to be the... The proportion here of the torso so the torso right here should be again uh from the clavicle all the way down right here to that 10th rib should roughly be the same distance down from the 10th rib to the um what's it called to the pelvis there right so there you go pretty consistent right you can actually get some good uh general shapes there boom 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 and they lock in kind of nicely I don't know. It's kind of a nice, again, you don't have to follow these exactly, but once you do kind of see it, you'll actually find that a lot of these proportions, man, it, it can help you out tremendously uh, when, when wanting to draw quickly as well. But all right, let me go ahead and kind of do a quick kind of drawing for this girl here just to kind of clean it up a bit more. Um, and yeah. You can't undo or stretch. I know, I know. For those of you who can't undo or stretch if you're doing it on paper, I know it's a little bit of a bit of a handicap there in that regard, but I think there are still things you can do. Again, I think practicing it out and actually just kind of working on um, seeing these things and, and correcting yourself, I think is, is valuable enough. So you don't have to go in and actually try to do all the warping. The one digital, it is pretty OP. Yes, 100%. <laughs> it's a lot easier to make changes on digital than it is to, to do that all on uh, paper. Um, thank you for the D shrimp, by the way. Appreciate that white leash. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. So yeah, let's take a little bit of a breaker to go ahead and draw the face and stuff. Um, in the meantime, um, if there are any questions in the chat, please feel free to ask them. As you guys know, I'm not, I'm not here on Twitch just to draw and stuff. I'm here to have these conversations with you guys and try to help you guys out as much as I can. Um, and you can kind of treat my streams, if anything, as kind of like a mentorship. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask me, uh, whether it's about me or your own thing that you're struggling with or just what we're covering today, please, please feel free to ask um, in the chat. Um, don't hesitate because, um, yeah, um, I'm not just here to draw. I do a lot of drawing already in my own free time. I'm here, I'm here because I want to help out as many people as I can. 
um, on Twitch and on YouTube, I guess. Um, great lessons. I've been watching on YouTube. Just wanted to say you're great. Ah, oh, thank you, Vagrant Poet. I appreciate that. Thank you for the follows earlier. Um, thank you for those of you who come out and find me on YouTube and actually check out our streams. We got a we got a Jason Redemption two from Wizardus. Let me knock that out real quick. Uh, hey guys, Jason here. Got a message from Wizardus Unishi. Wanted me to let you know that uh, KSM is our family out here. This is the uh, Dom Toretto of the art community. Uh, family <laughs> i don't know there you go that's your that's your family message out here um um any open source docs about art from me open source docs um i have they're not necessarily open source but i have um i have some free docs that you can grab um so it's semi open source in that regard um but you can grab those on my discord channel those are all free to grab. Again, um, I have a bunch of resources that are free for everybody out here. KSM Toretto. Yeah, that's me, guys. Um, how to keep up with practice, art learning, and not getting frustrated, aka not giving up. Oh, that's a good one. Do you guys want to talk about that? How many of you guys, um, how many of you guys can relate? Also, here's a treat for my dog. Here, buddy. I'll give you a little treat for your bed. Um, how many of you guys can relate to this? How to keep up with the uh practice? and learning art, but not getting frustrated and not giving up. How many of you guys felt like you've, uh, you've given up before, uh, with your art, you made a bad drawing and you're just kind of like, man, I'm done. I quit. <laughs> I quit drawing. It's over for me. You mean like one bad drawing. You're like, I'm never drawing again. I was never meant to be an artist. You guys ever have those days? Put an F in the chat, man. Um, if so, I can talk a little bit about how to find a good, healthy balance of studying and keeping practice and stuff, um, while also, you know, not, not burning yourself out from doing it. You do it after every minor inconvenience. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that all the time too. Um, so here's what I'll say about, about that. I think, I think the thing about studying that sometimes I find people, um, people maybe misunderstand when it comes to art is is this okay when it comes to studying in school there's going to be a lot of subjects that you don't like right let's, let's be honest i think we've all had a subject that we've like maybe disliked um for me personally it was biology no offense to any of my biologists in the chat or those of you who, are, who like that kind of stuff i just couldn't vibe with biology right chat let me know let me know what was the one subject in school that you were just like man this sucks. <laughs> I don't, I hate doing this. Let me, let me see him in the chat. I want to see if there's like a general one here that people just disliked. Um, for me, I was definitely biology. Um, I was okay with the other subject. I actually really liked math and stuff, which makes sense. I was, you know, I, I became a software engineer, but, um, I would say for me, um, I always thought of those things. Like whenever I was studying biology, I was like, dude, I hate studying biology. It's so boring. This and that it feels like a chore right? And sometimes artists who are also studying and learning how to do the fundamentals and stuff, they sometimes think of uh, learning and studying art as being a chore as well, similar to how you would if you were in school. It's like, oh man, I got to learn anatomy. I got to learn perspective, this and that. This is so much work, you know, it's so tiring. And I think part of that problem again is because I think if you start treating it as homework, things that you quote unquote have to do, it's going to start to feel like you're doing a chore and that you're not going to want to do it. And so one of the best ways I try to tell people, if for those of you who want to study and stuff and get better at doing art and, and have fun doing it is pick and choose the things that you feel like are interesting to you in your current journey as an artist, right? If people keep telling you you need to study anatomy, but you currently don't care about anatomy right now, don't study anatomy. Choose something else, right? But let's say you're like, man, Kesem, I really want to draw some cool dynamic poses. That is what I'm really into right now. I want to be able to draw characters in different perspectives and different angles, doing all these different things, right? How do I do that? How do I have fun doing that? That's the thing that I want to tell you guys. Also, is that a raid? Yo, wait a minute. Young Nails Inc. Hold on. I got to give a proper intro for Young Nails Inc. Thank you so much, everybody who's coming in from that stream. Um, if you guys don't know Young Nails Inc., they're actually a group on Twitch. They're super dope. I got to meet them recently. Let me give you a proper shout out, though. Um, they're really cool, and I'll explain why they're really cool. Um, so what they do on Twitch, guys, is they actually focus. Their content is primarily... I can't type. Their, their, their content is actually primarily focused on nails and nail 
art. So if you guys are interested in anything related to that, those of you who maybe paint your nails or just want, you know, a little something on the side there, super dope stuff. Got to, I, I, I can't recommend enough. I'm always, I'm always a big fan of content on Twitch that is slightly different. You know what I'm saying? They put a lot of cool work out there and they put a lot of hard effort onto their streams as well. So highly recommend it for those of you who are looking for, you know, a little something different on the platform. So many, look at this, look at a crazy messages out here. Damn. Um, but let me give you guys an intro about me as well. For those of you who are coming in here, um, let's go ahead and not, not steal nails though. Maybe that could be a cool little side thing they do. I'm talking about the nails on your fingers, not like a hardware, you know, Home Depot nails though. Again, maybe, Hey, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they do that on like Fridays or something. Friday is like Home Depot day, but I'll do a quick intro for myself. Here we go in three, two, uh, one. Welcome in everybody to my stream. My name is KSM and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Right now, I'm also prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you just like animation or you want to hang out with my dog who is uh, sleeping over there, make sure to leave a follow out here on Twitch. Twitch. If you're watching from YouTube, like and subscribe the video. And with that being said, let's get back into the content. Yes, that is me. That is my little intro out here. Welcome in again, everybody who's coming in from Young Nails Inc. You guys are insane. The community there is, whew, the community out there is insane. You guys are actually super dope. Uh, thank you so much. So many people uh, who are coming in here today. Wow. Wow. The chat's just blowing up, man. This feels like I'm on the front page. Am I on the front page? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> wow, insane. Um, all right, but uh, thank you again. Um, here's what we're going to do for those of you guys who are coming in here, by the way. Um, today, what we're covering is character proportions. So we're going to be showing here, um, we're show I'm showing you guys um, how to kind of draw simply some of the characters and stuff, breaking down some of the proportions. We're talking about how to draw characters simply. Um, but overall, in my streams and my content, we've actually been uh, teaching a lot out here on the platform. So we cover everything from anatomy, how to draw different faces. Um, last stream, we actually covered how to draw hair. So for those of you who've ever struggled with, uh, with hair and stuff, this is something that we are also covering out here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, now I'm not forgetting about the chat. I'm, I'm reading the chat. Oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> you mean, you mean covering the chat? Yes. Yes. Um, what is the sleeve thing on my hand? This is just um, a glove that I use to make it so that my sweaty hands don't end up uh, adding friction against the iPad. So it's just something that I have. Not everyone needs it, but you know, it's good to have. Um, and that's super cool. A lot of you guys are saying out here that you are, um, you guys are out here, but um, you know, maybe you're interested in art. Maybe you got kids that are interested in art. Um, that's super dope. Um, yes. Yeah. Great, great content. I actually got to meet um, Young Nails, uh, Young Nails Inc., um, uh, young, young, so hard to say. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, I got to meet them actually recently at an event. So it was super dope. Young Nails Inc. Yeah. Um, I got to meet them recently and, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that you guys are here as well, uh, with your, with your, with your viewers and stuff too. Um, but yeah, so we do a lot of different things out here, but there, it's primarily educational content. I'll just, I'll just give you guys a heads up now. Um, we talk a lot about different things out here on the platform and actually I'm going to, I'm going to pivot back because there was a conversation. Um, there was a conversation that somebody had earlier. They asked about how to deal with burnout. Maybe some of you are trying to study and you're trying to figure out, you know, how to improve your skills, but you're also feeling like man case. I'm, I feel like sometimes it's a chore. Sometimes it's pretty tiring to, to try to study and do all of these things. How can I, um, kind of balance. How can I balance studying while also having fun and not getting tired of doing all of that stuff? Now, what I'll say about all this again, and I'll kind of bring it back is I think the, the, the thing that I found that was really helpful for me and, and helped me find success was actually being able to think about the things that I was studying, not as some chore that I had to do or not like some class in school that I had to study or do homework for because I was, you know, I was kind of mad about it. Um, but mostly, um, I chose to focus on things that I cared about because I was genuinely interested in getting better at those things. And one of the best things I always tell people, for those of you who are studying and stuff, um, what you want to do is not only study, like, let's say, for example, you're studying the anatomy of the human body. Don't just study the anatomy and like do a diagram or whatever. 
I would actually highly encourage you guys as well to go in and actually start including it into your own drawings too, right? So go in there, um, practice with some of the, uh, you know, practice some of the anatomy with your own character design, see what you're picking up and stuff. And that's actually a, out of what I think is one of the best things you can do um, as an artist is not only just study these topics, but actually try to include it in your um, in your own drawing. So kind of balance studying with fun, creative, you get what I'm saying? Like fun, creative projects and stuff too. So personally, that's what I would say is, is for me, what I found was a secret. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do to kind of make that ratio work a little bit better. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll study for like 50% of the time. And then the other 50%, I'll utilize that to do more creative projects and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's um, the general advice I would give. But also, I, I also tell people too that there's no shame in taking breaks, right? If you're if you're genuinely feeling tired because you've been studying so much, take a break. It's okay. Um, I I always felt like when I was younger, when I was first starting out, I felt like I was so behind with um, I felt like I was so behind with with art. Like how many of you guys in the chat have ever felt that way with your art? Um, I know there's a lot of chatting right now, so welcome in. A lot of a lot of people come in. The energy is crazy today. Um, but put an F in the chat if you've ever felt like, man, you're looking at Instagram or something, you're seeing some crazy artist out there who's younger than you or better or whatever, and you're kind of like, yo, what's going on with me? Like everyone is so ahead of me. I'm plateauing or I'm not improving, but there's so look at this person over here. They're they're killing it. Right. And so I always tell people, you know, like it's not a race necessarily. Um, it's not about who gets there the fastest, because at the end of the day, art is generally a long term endeavor. And so, you know, think of it in the long run. Right. Think of it as things that you that you want to improve on in the long term and don't focus on trying to be um, trying to get to other people where they're at right now, because oftentimes that's just a recipe for burnout and a recipe for comparing yourself um, too harshly against and uh comparing yourself harshly to other people that you don't necessarily have a perspective on as well like you don't necessarily know uh what they're doing out there um tea or beanie yeah so the, the whole thing about tea or beanie is just an inside thing we have here i drink a lot of tea on my streams so if you guys want virtual tea or if you want a little beanie out here if you're cold that's just what we have it's like a little well it's a little joke thing but yeah i'm drinking tea right now <laughs> Um, is it a big learning curve drawing uh, from paper and switching to digital? Any pro or cons? Um, great question. I think that um, I think the biggest thing that I hear all the time with a bunch of uh, like beginner artists who are switching over to digital is they feel like a little overwhelmed. They're like, oh man, KSM, what about all these features and bells and tools and all that stuff? Do I have to learn all that stuff? And I always tell people, um, treat digital art not as like as something fancy or magical. Think of it as just another tool, like how you would paint with watercolors or color pencils or whatever. Um, and focus on the basic primitive stuff, like vo focus on the brush tool, the eraser tool. Don't worry too much about, you know, I'm like, oh man, I got to use, I got to use this multiply layer and this and that and the liquify. And you know what I'm saying? Like it, it gets a little too complicated and then people get overwhelmed by it. And so I always tell people just focus on the basic stuff as you would with anything else and treat it like how you would with a uh, drawing on paper. And this is actually what I do with my own art. Um, if you guys watch my streams long enough, you'll see that I don't really use too much bells and whistles on my stream. I treat it as I would if I were to draw digital uh, traditionally um, on paper and stuff. So um, that's what I would say. Now, over time, as you start, you know, getting better with digital and getting comfortable with it, sure, you know, start learning some of the cool tools that make digital art, um, make digital art more, you know, more appealing and stuff. But you know, you don't have to. Um, get jump in and all those things right away. And yo, what's going on today? What is actually going on today? <laughs> Thank you so much for another raid from Sims. How's it going, everybody from Sims' stream? Welcome in, guys. If you guys don't know who Sims Art is, another amazing streamer out here on Twitch, another amazing artist out here on the platform. Thank you for the shout out. Um, they're super dope. Uh, Sims is great. They are part of my Twitch team here on the platform. And I got to actually work with them back when we were uh, in the DA Collective together. Highly recommend you guys check out Sims' stream. Super cool artist, uh, super chill vibes. Sims, you probably got to sleep or got to head out, but thank you again. And for those of you guys who are, ooh, what the heck, kind of crashed. Uh, for those of you guys who are coming in here from Sims' stream, uh, welcome in. My name is KSM. I teach art on Twitch. And uh, yeah, today we're covering proportions and we're just answering questions from the chat and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. 
And um, right now we're just going to knock out this hair and then we'll hopefully squeeze in another. I want to squeeze in one more, one more pose with you guys. Okay. Just one more out here. Um, Seth's pens has have been expensive, but he's been doing, uh, since age five. Oh yeah. So I also have brushes. Yeah. If you guys are interested, I do have digital brushes that are free to grab, um, on my gum road out here. I dropped a link real quick to my gum road. Um, it's right here. You guys can grab that if you want to, it's free. Um, but there are some paid brushes there as well. If you guys want like the full set and stuff, but I always try to make all my stuff out here as free as possible and as accessible as possible because, um, as you guys may or may not know, um, I actually dropped out of art school when I was younger because I couldn't afford it. And that for me was a big part of why I actually teach art on Twitch was because I realized that um, it shouldn't be that way. You know what I'm saying? Like it shouldn't be the way that just because you can't afford something that you shouldn't be able to do something. Um, and so now that I'm in a different place in my career, working professionally and learning all the things that I've learned, um, I want to try to make art education and, and in general art as accessible as possible. Uh, and all that I ask is you guys be willing to practice and, um, you know, put that, put the effort in. If you guys are willing to do that, then, um, then I got you guys covered. So I got a bunch of free stuff on my, on my gum road. I also got free worksheets and cheat sheets that you guys can download on my discord channel. Um, that stuff there is like, I'll show you guys really quick. Why not? Um, so that right there is, um, all of this stuff here, right? Um, what about wrong button? Um, all of this stuff right here. So here's today's worksheet. Here's the three references that you guys can download and follow along with. Here is the proportions sheet that I actually made last year, kind of covering the seven head proportions. And then this one right here is a model uh, model proportion sheet that I made for Mako um, in Legend of Korra. So you can grab these sheets right here, free to grab. Um, and I think we actually hit our sub goal. I think we hit our sub goal. So I'm actually going to give you guys another sheet as well, because every 10 sheets on my stream will actually unlock another free sheet for everybody watching. So not only do the, do the subs help me, um, but they also benefit everybody who is watching live today. So let me give you guys the head sheet, because I think this one's a valuable one since we're not really covering the head anatomy as much today. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give this one to you guys for free. Um, three, two, one, there you go. So go ahead, guys, grab this sheet. It's another free sheet out here to grab. I'll show it over here so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, but this one basically covers the skeletal anatomy, muscular anatomy, and some of the general forms of drawing the head. So highly recommend this one, especially for those of you who um, are maybe struggling with drawing out the, um, the anatomy and proportions of, uh, of the head here. So this one will be a really great one to grab. It's free, again, um, so just, just grab that on the Discord channel. Um, but yes, welcome in everybody. Thank you for all the follows today. An insane amount of follows. I have no clue what's going on today, but I'm not going to question it. We're not going to question it out here. Um, yeah, yeah. We give cheat sheets. <laughs> thank you for the prime subs. Thank you for all the follows today. Um, having a hard time with portions. I'll definitely recommend the stream. Ah, oh, thank you so much guys. Um, appreciate all of the, wow, just energy today. What's going on? What's going on today? Y'all, y'all are not bots, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think you guys are all chilling um, out here. Can this help me with drawing on paper? Yes. So I want to I want to remind you guys that I'm, I'm I'm not here to teach you guys how to draw digital art or anything. Um, a lot of the tips that I cover out here is for drawing in general, uh, whether you're doing digital, whether you're doing pencil, uh, all that stuff. Right. It's it's all going to be general advice that I think will be helpful to you guys. Um, because it's not specific to, I'm not, again, I'm not here to be like, oh, you got to use this particular brush and you have to use this particular setting. No, it's, it's, it's not about that. It's more just like, these are the things that I do, um, to draw. Um, and if you guys want to, you know, take that, then, um, you can apply it to your own art, but all right. So here is the, um, rough drawing here we have with a girl again, going over some of the basic proportions we did from side view now. Um, the side view is not going to change too much, to be honest, from, from the front view that we did earlier. I think if there's anything here that I want to call out for those of you who are maybe struggling with drawing characters in side view, which I don't know, actually put an F in the chat. Let's see how many of you guys in the chat here struggle with drawing characters in side view, kind of like what we're covering uh, right now. You're like, case I'm, I could do this F front view easy peasy. I can do this one. But then the moment you're like side view case, Sam, what's going on? I don't understand. It's confusing. If that is something that you are struggling with, I'll show you guys really quick. Uh, let me just add this elbow joint real quick and all that stuff. 
Um, but I think overall, this is good. Um, I think we don't need to do any more than this. Um, just for the rough example that we have here, right? Just giving, giving you guys a rough one. Um, the overall thing I, I always look for when it comes to drawing kind of things in side view like this is always balancing out that gesture. So right here, pay attention to the curvature of the spine. I'll do this in a different color. Um, and thank you for the sub, uh, Solar Bear. Appreciate that. Sheesh. Um, so pay attention here to the curvature of the spine, a little bit like this. Okay, let me hold on. Let me like that. A little bit of the spine there. Uh, pay attention to the rhythms as well too. So notice how here, um, you'll actually see how the leg here is going to curve as well. And then the, this part's going to straighten out. But then here, this leg is going to curve. This part's going to straighten out on this side. So finding those asymmetric rhythms when drawing characters in side view, I think is actually really a nice way to kind of add some rhythm um, and be able to visualize what's going on a little bit better. So um, I'll move that a little bit here to the side. But okay, I think we're good with this one. I don't know if there's anything more I want to add. Like at this point, we're just going to be making it look better, but I think we're okay. Um, oh, what do we raffle out? Yeah, we do have a raffle. Okay, there's a lot of you here. So we might do that in a bit, actually. <laughs> we'll do a raffle in a bit. Yes, I'm, I'm down to do the raffle spin. Uh, just give me a second. Um, but as for the things that we, um, as for the things that we raffle actually out here, um, oh, it's Caesar. Hey, how's it going? Designs by Caesar. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was nice meeting you, um, on that one mixer thing. Uh, thank you again for bringing in your viewers out here. Really appreciate that. Um, and I hope, I hope, I hope that your, your viewers are enjoying my stream. Let me know. Let me know chat. Um, I know that this might be a little different from some of the other content on Twitch. I, there's not a lot of people who teach art on Twitch, to be honest. Um, and so sometimes I'm always like, man, do people find this entertaining or interesting? Cause there's a lot of cool stuff out here. And there's a little, old, there's a little old case I'm out here. Who's just, you know, teaching, but let me know, let me know if you guys found this helpful or just found it interesting. Um, you know, we're trying out here. This is, this is for the people who are looking for it. So I'm not trying to be like the most entertaining streamer on Twitch, just trying to most entertaining art streamer art educational streamer i'll say that there you go that if there, if there is a goal maybe it's that i want to i want to be i want to be up there with education and, and art <laughs> is there a category for that probably not but that's okay all right mm, cool 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 so we've got here we've locked out the the general structure let's go in and do one final pose but before then let's actually kind of uh We'll do, uh, what's it called? We'll do some of the raffle spin and stuff as well too, because we have, we do have a raffle spin that we should be doing. Thank you so much again for those of you who cheered bits and those of you who subscribed as well. Appreciate that. Kasem's going after Bob Ross. Nah, nah, nah. No one can replace, no one can replace Bob Ross. Let's be real. But I wanted just to kind of do a quick little silhouette here, um, just to kind of showcase again the the structure that we got here but you know uh, again it's it's not about necessarily measuring everything out when it comes to proportions i think it's really about um finding the things that kind of make the most sense to you and and leveraging that to your own stylistic choices and as long as you have any guideline whether it's the proportions that i talked about today or um or some ones that you make on your own that you find on your own self-discovery i think that's going to be beneficial um, in the long run, but there you go. This is going to be our drawing. Let's go ahead and move on now to the next one. Ta -da! Quick little rough drawing there. You're from the young nail stream. Super dope. Um, this feels like an actual college lecture where I can learn Thanks, That's super awesome. Yeah. Um, again, these are also available on YouTube for those of you guys who are tuning in from YouTube as well. Um, can I ask you the best free program I can find on the iPad or do you think it's much better to use professional app? I will say here, I don't know too much about some of the free apps, but I will say that procreate is a $5 one-time payment. And I have been using procreate for all over three years now, um, both personally and professionally. It's honestly been one of the best tools out there. It, I think it, it actually, I'm not sponsored by them. I wish though, I wish I was sponsored by them. Um, but I'm not sponsored by them. Um, it's one of the best programs that I've found it, it, I think compares really well to bigger programs like Photoshop and CSP and it's a fraction of the price and it's a one-time fee as well. So no subscription model or, or anything like that. Um, 
Yeah. I will say though that CSP, watch out for CSP. It is a good program as well too, but you do got to pay monthly if you are buying it for iPad and stuff. So just, just a heads up. Um, yeah. Thank you for all the follows. An incredible amount of follows today. I'm, I'm like kind of overwhelmed, honestly, because I, I haven't been this overwhelmed on Twitch in a bit of time. <laughs> okay. Look, I've been on the platform for about three years now. I don't usually get overwhelmed, but damn, today the energy is crazy, man. Today feels like a Saturday stream. You guys are insane. Thank you so much. Okay, cool guys. So let's go ahead and do, I'll put this reference away. And I want us to hopefully have enough time here to do some back poses because I feel like that is going to be an important one to go over today, but we'll do a raffle spin first since there's so many of you guys here, or maybe we'll do the back post first and then we'll do the, we'll do the raffle spin after because I want to make sure, I kind of want to make sure we cover the, um, we'll cover that one as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to move this one here. All right. So here you go. Here's a little drawing of that girl, but okay, let's talk about drawing characters from back view. Oh boy. Oh boy. Put an F in the chat for this one. I know, I know there's got to be people who are struggling with this one. This is tough. Drawing characters in back view. It's tough because we don't normally do it. Put an F in the chat. Let's see here. Let's see here who is struggling today. I put an F on this one because back poses, man, oh man, it's going to be a doozy, but we got this one today. All right. So let's talk a little bit about drawing characters in back view. We're going to lay out some of the proportions out here. And um, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll actually be okay. It won't actually be that scary. All right, that's that's my goal. So let's go ahead and start jumping on this one. And then after this one, we'll, we will do the raffle spin. Yeah, muscles on the back are tough. I agree. Um, but we'll kind of cover some of that. Now, really quick, guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour. Uh, one's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. But if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a Prime sub. But either way, I hope to see you guys after the ad break. And thank you so much for supporting my streams and watching. All right. But let's talk a bit about back poses. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is actually going to be very similar from what we were doing earlier when it came down to drawing um, the, the character in front view. I'm going to start off here with the large mass of the rib cage, but this time I'm going to be using slightly different landmarks because it's going to be uh, obviously the muscles are, or the, the muscles in anatomy are going to be different in back view than they are going to be in front view, right? Um, here, what in, instead of using the clavicle on the backside there, I'm actually going to be using the tops here of the scapula. Now, if you guys don't know what the scapula is, that's also known as the shoulder blades. They're going to be kind of originating right here on the side of the torso. Um, and these are really great landmarks because one, it tells you roughly where the positioning of the arms are, uh, but also two, they're actually pretty visible across different body types. So whether you're drawing, I'll show you guys, um, whether you're drawing a, a muscular character or a skinny character, um, or even a fat character, you'll actually see a few landmarks that are going to be consistent. One of them is going to be the, the, the shoulder blades there. So pay attention to the shoulder blades, a really great, easy landmark to use. So that's going to be one that we're going to be referencing there. Now let's go add here, here, the, just the general structure of the spine. We're going to take here the distance from here to here, bring that all the way down here. And that's going to be the rough distance again of the pelvis, right? I'm adding in here a little bit of a tilt for the pelvis because the pelvic bone does uh, tilt a little bit forward. Um, so we're just going to kind of add that in there, but overall, this is going to be the rough gesture. And again, keeping that distance, right? So notice here, halfway mark. Easy peasy. Again, once you see some of these things, they're going to keep happening again. And it'll actually be something that you'll be able to train your eye and stuff. Um, don't worry, Kay. I stopped struggling with back poses because I stopped drawing them. <laughs> all right. All right. How many of you guys have ever done this? You're like, Kay Sim, you know, I don't really struggle with drawing hands because I just keep putting them in the pockets. The other eye, I don't really struggle drawing the other eye, KSM, because I just go like this. I just cover the other eye in my drawings. Put an F in the chat if you've ever done that. I know there's, there's I know you guys. I know your strategies. Y'all like, KSM, how can you struggle if you never draw it? Think about it, KSM. Yeah, I know. What else is there? Um, I know some of you guys probably have done this before. You put some baggy clothing on your characters because you're like, I don't know the anatomy. Anatomy? Never heard of her. Let me just, my characters, they just like wearing hoodies all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They just like wearing hoodies. That's that's it. It's, it's not because I don't know how to draw it. No, never. Some of you maybe don't even draw the body. Maybe you're like, yeah, I only draw portraits. <laughs> Let me just cut off everything below the neck. I don't even I don't even touch that. Nah, nah I just I just draw portraits. That's what I like to do. Right. I know you guys. How do I know? Because I've been there myself. I've been there. I've been, you know, I've told myself all these tricks where it's like, no, no, it's just my style. Why is everyone typing out? F? <laughs> We're paying respects, paying respects to all the fallen artists in the chat who've, uh, who've been called out on my streams. It's a meme. The F F's in the chat. I don't know if you guys know it. It's a, it's a meme from call of duty. It's because call of duty, right? Not, not a, wait, was it call of duty? No, I'm no, I'm confused. Wait, was it Call of Duty or was it from Medal of Honor? It's got to be Call of Duty. I think so. Um, do you always use references when you draw? Um, on on stream, yes, but that's because I'm teaching it to you guys and so I always want to make sure you guys are um following along and having something to follow along with. Um, but for work and for personal stuff, it depends. It depends uh, at what stage I am in the in the ide ideation phase. So sometimes yes, sometimes no, but um, on stream, yes. And the reason why is because it's a lot easier to teach it when you guys can follow along with the reference as well. So um, yeah, but if you guys don't want to use a reference, you you don't have to. Like I don't actually have to use a reference. Um, I can draw the human body pretty consistently again because I, I have the understanding of the proportions and stuff, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the proportions here, right? And I'm just going to double it. So we're going to go from here. We're going to double it and bring it down here. And that's going to be the distance of the leg. See, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm telling you guys, man, once you understand the secrets of the human body and the proportions, yo, man, it makes drawing human characters so much easier. Actually insane. Look at that halfway mark again. Right? Halfway right here. Halfway right here. It's that easy. Um, You think it was Modern Warfare? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was, um, that was Call of Duty. Okay, good. I, look, it's been a while. All right. <laughs> that joke, that joke is kind of old. That meme is kind of old. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I love that you all pay respects. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all paying respects here to the, to the other fallen artists in the chat. It's rough out here. Um, would you recommend learning to draw the whole face every time or break it down by day, uh, by days, head, eyes, nose, etc.? I think a bit of both. Um, I think a bit of both. And I actually cover, if you guys are interested, I actually cover the, the facial expressions, how to draw, not facial expressions, the facial features on my YouTube channel. I actually released those videos recently. So I cover, um, there's two videos. One is covering the, uh, the eyes, eyes, nose, and lips. And the other video covers ears, teeth, and mouth. So um, if you guys have ever struggled with any of those facial features and stuff, highly recommend checking out those videos because those actually go pretty in depth with the facial features. Um, but to answer your question about whether or not you should be studying those individually first, I don't think so. Um, I think personally studying the general idea of the face is actually more important than um, all the specific facial features because here's something that I used to do when I was younger and maybe this is something you guys can relate to as well when I was younger and I would be doodling on my notebooks and stuff I'd always be drawing out a little eye like this right like in the corner of my page I'd be like oh yeah let me draw this eye right so I'm out here I'm putting in all this crazy effort on drawing out the coolest best eye ever with all the eyelashes and all of this right you guys know what I'm talking about and you can draw a really cool eye right you can draw this super dope eye but then the moment you try to slap it on a face and it's like Huh? The hell is this? You know what I'm talking about? And so I always tell you guys, make sure to, you know, practice drawing the whole face, be able to do some of that stuff, you know, get a little bit of variety there, um, you know, but, but also understand the whole, the whole face. Yeah. I've done that too many times, man. <laughs> you're drawing out here and you're just like, yo, yo, what's going on? I can draw this one eye really good. But everything else does not make sense. So I always say, you know, practice it, you know. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about anatomy just right now um, because I think it is important. 
But again, this is not going to be a specific anatomy stream. So just keep that in mind. But I think this is actually important. So one of the things here I want to call out is that the the, there's actually a few muscles right here on the shoulder blade, also known as the scapula, which actually connect to um, the shoulder here of the arm, which actually creates that shoulder joint. Um, the first one right here is going to be known as the infraspinatus, joined in here with the um, the teres minor, I believe. I have to double check. I believe it's the infraspinatus and the teres minor. I think so. I, I, I don't need to double check. I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, and then underneath right here is actually going to be known as the teres major. And you can actually see this on the reference right here. Primarily, you can actually see this right here. That's going to be the teres major uh, muscle right there. So these two kind of major groups, I'm, I'm combining some of them, are actually going to help create some of the muscle form there. Now, keep in mind that the teres major muscle actually twists and goes onto the front side of the arm there. So we're looking at it from back view, but this will be kind of uh, relevant there. And then here we're going to have the lat muscles here kind of going in and then tapering down all the way this way. So you'll start to see how we're actually taking some of these basic forms that we've got here, and we're actually now adding in some of the muscles and stuff that'll start piecing it together. But you'll notice like, okay, once we're kind of getting all this in here, we're actually now getting a rough idea of how to draw this back and keep some of the proportions consistent. Not bad, right? Um, we're talking about how the shoulder moves and how the skin fold stretches as you move it. Not today. Um, not today, salty job. Today, we're focusing primarily on proportions and how to draw characters from different um, different. Uh, angles and viewpoints. So we did one from front view, side view, and um, back view there. Um, <laughs> oh, you're, so, you're, you're all good. Thank you so much, Minima, for the sub. And I, I appreciate the, the belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hope you're doing well out here. Appreciate that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there you go, guys. That's going to be the shoulder out there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do one shoulder arm here. And again, for the proportions here, I, what I like to think of it is um, when you're not including the joint and you're just including the upper arm here, the length of the upper arm all the way down to the elbow right here, this is actually going to be roughly the same length as the length of the forearm. And so you can actually use that as a nice kind of easy way to establish some of the proportions there for the arm, right? Nice and easy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here, add a little bit of tricep muscle, right? A little bit of connection there for the elbow. And uh, there you go. We got here a nice looking arm, right? Erasing some of these. Uh, let me go in here, add a little bit of the ridge muscles there on the outer side. Add here the brachial, uh, not the brachialis, the flexor muscles on the inside right here. Um, a little bit of the ulna, bo uh, ulna bone right there, some tendons for the wrist, and there you go. We've got here nice, juicy, easy peasy um, arms, hands, and all of that jazz. Okay, there you go. And then I'll simplify the fingers to whatever. Okay. Um, but that is going to basically be it for the back pose in terms of the overall proportions. I'm just going to duplicate this and flip it, put it on the other side. Um, so that way we have an arm here. And I think with that, we can actually just kind of clean it up a little bit. And I think we can call this one done for the back pose. All right. But yeah, let me know if that was uh, helpful at all to see. I know we kind of sped run this one. But again, we covered actually a lot of the major proportions already um, when we did... Um, when we actually cover the pose in front view. So this right here is actually not going to change too much in back view. The major changes you're going to be seeing, again, are going to be in the back muscles right here with the lats, um, the shoulder muscles there from the uh, terrace major, all of that stuff. And then all of this here is actually just some nice, chill, easy uh, muscle groups. Now, this is not an anatomy stream, so I'm not going to go over the muscles today. Um, but, uh, we have videos for that on my YouTube channel. And the answer to your question, Disco Z is actually yes. Um, I actually upload all my tutorial videos for free on YouTube. Um, so all the boot camp stuff out here where I actually go more in depth on the anatomy, those are all available for free on my YouTube channel. So, you know, go, go check those out. If you guys are interested, subscribe. We're almost actually at 5k subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much. We've only been uploading videos more recently in the past, like two months. And so it's insane the number of su subscribers and the support we've been getting over there on the YouTube channel. You guys are dope. Um, but yeah, this is um, that's kind of that's kind of it here for the anatomy and the proportions there, right? So again, utilizing a lot of those simplified uh, gestures. Now here's a few things I'll call out too. Um, keep in mind here that the K 
calf muscles actually go into uh, the leg here and then the hamstring muscles right here actually fan out this way. So they kind of go like this and they create a pocket there for the leg. Um, and then that transition between those two muscle groups are actually covered by uh, a bit of fat. So um, a bit of fat right about here. You kind of see the little fat there to kind of soften that transition. And then other things to call out too are going to be the gesture of the diagonal quad, uh, calves going inward like this, and then the ankle bones going upwards like that. So a few little gestural uh, tips there. Sweet. All right. So here's what we're going to do because I think we've actually, I sped run this one and I'm sorry that if, if I went a little too fast, uh, on the back post here, again, I just wanted to make sure we had time to do other things. Um, but here's what we're going to do guys. So today we actually got a raffle, which I think is a great time to do this because there's a lot of you guys here. So let's go ahead and do this quick raffle spin. Now, if you guys, um, is the inner ankle higher than the outer ankle? The inner ankle is higher than the outer ankle. Yes, that is correct. Because the inner ankle is the tibia bone and the outer ankle is the fibula bone. 